bring the threat. Step to me, we beat death. Bloodshot, bloodshed, and we. The devil's daddy, the future looks bleak. From sun up to sun down. Danny Diablo rocks the crown. Shout out to Trap, my ninja smurf. Ill rock, we put in that work. Tuck your chains in, run your gold. Tricks in the air, strip is at the pole. Take your life, disconnect your dreams. And this life ain't always what it seems. Oh, the storm is psycho. Rock holes in the middle of psycho. Oh, you get with it, the full of pain. She's my heart, she's insane. Hey, the I'm storm is psycho. Rock holes in the middle of psycho. Oh, you get with it, the full of pain. She's my heart, she's insane. The lights are on, no one's home. Life cuts straight to the bone. Streets of passion, street pain. Stretch out, ignite the flames. So, so young, so, so fine. I think the Lord back your mind. Right and die, them to a spark. Sacred love after dark. I need your touch, I kiss those lips. Lust for life, eternal bliss. I slay your demons, terrorist your life. We body climbing every single night. I own the storm cycle. Rock holes in the depths of his heart. Oh, oh, oh. Don't get with the full of pain. She's my heart, she's insane. Hey, I'm the storm cycle. Rock holes in the depths of his heart. Oh, oh, oh. Don't get with the full of pain. She's my heart, she's insane. Hey, I'm the storm cycle. What's happening? It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Greetings, everyone around the world. Ouch. Ouch. I'm hurting myself. What's going on, everybody? What's happening? What's up, Davey Hooligan? What's happening up in Canada, Mark? I see the whole gang out there. Have a good time in the chat room today. I know it's tough. I know it's <laughs> I know it's tough. I'm doing a show here. But listen, it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, man. We got a great guest today. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, the Texas Silver Rush and your core hardcore fan page. Yeah. What else? What else can I, what else? What can I tell you? What can I tell you that you don't already know? What's up, Adrian in, 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 in Bremen, man. All right. Love that town. Bremen, Germany, my kind of town. You're on 79th street, Sid. 79th street on the West side. 79th street runs the length of the island, Sid. You got to be more specific than that. What's up in the Bristol, Aaron? Bristol, UK. Nice. Italy. What's up in Italy, Andrea? My man. Where in Italy are you, man? My Italian brother. Hey, you know, um, <laughs> you want to know what's cracking in veg news? Hold on. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. Just for you, man. Th thank you. Thank you for giving me the lead in. Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located in the East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue. Featured in New York Magazine, the New York Times, and Veg News. The, their dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu can be made gluten-free for all you gluten-free motherfuckers. This year, they are celebrating their 20th anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing clean food. After three months of being closed, they're now open for deliveries. Get in touch with them and order some great 
motherfucking gluten-free food at www.theorganicgrill.com. Also, while we're at it, the Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to create unique one-off pieces as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo, photos, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rowley, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. During this current pandemic, all information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.texassilverrush.com. That's what's happened. That's what's cracking in veg news. That said, um, how about a couple of upcoming shows before we bring on, uh, let me clear the deck here. Let's talk about some upcoming shows. Next up, next up after this is the people show. The, the, the party people show is coming up after this. Uh, we're going to bring on the teenagers from New Jersey in reaching out. They have, we're going to talk to some, we're going to talk to some young people. We're talking to some young people, getting a little tired of talking to these old motherfuckers, you know, old jaded hardcore motherfuckers, you know. Let's bring on some youth. This show needs some youth. This show needs some girls too. But don't worry, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm gonna have some female guests coming up. After that, a week from today, is Dino from Fear Factory. Who, uh, if you're looking, uh, if if you're if you're uh, if you're up on the scuttlebutt, there's some drama in the Fear Factory camp. It seems like Burton Bell just left the band, so this should be an interesting show. Uh, that said, also after that, we got our friend from Bridge Nine Records, Chris Wren, Boston Hardcore Represent, and then after that is the Machine himself, Armand from Sick of It All. So that's what's going on. In the meantime, let's bring on Steven Messina. What's up, bro? What's up? How are you? I'm good. I'm in the box. What's in the box? I'm in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah, I got you a little. I got you. You know what? I'm going to hook you. I'm, I'm doing all the banners for you. There it Hold is. On. There it is. Hold on. There it is. It's been a while. There it goes. All right. Wow. Yeah. What, what, what were we just laughing about before the show? Oh. Oh, you, you, let's let's have another laugh for, for, for everybody. The, uh, the 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 message on the iPhone when you woke up this morning. What was it? Not that that's funny. But oh, yesterday. No, yesterday morning. Anyone yeah. who has an iPhone, it has like the morning news, and it'll say good morning. And mine said, "Good morning, Stephen. One million dead from COVID." <laughs> it's fucked up. They said, oh, "I'm going to stay in bed. Thank you." But yeah, no, it's crazy. It's, yeah, that's uh, a, that's a, that's a Yes, Chris Hoffman, that's a District 9 shirt. Nice. Yep. yep. Nice. Yep. I just got some nice District 9 vinyl hey. from Todd not too long ago. So, You are the man in the box. I am the man in the box. I am the man in the box. Honk. Done. It, done. Won't you try? <laughs> that's it. Now we got to get Cantrell in here. Get Jerry Cantrell. I would love that. I can reach out to him. That'd be amazing. I haven't even thought of him. That'd be amazing. Yep. The uh, it's a beautiful day in Queens. Yes, it's a District Nine shirt. What's on the back? I don't know what uh -oh. is on the back. What's on the back? I don't know what is on the back. I don't. I don't. I don't exact. I don't exactly know what's on the back. Huh. Um. Get hot tuna. I wish. <laughs> hey, let's do let's do photo of the week. Let's do huh? photo of the day. Photo of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, I, you know why I said that, right? I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, it is that time. Photo of the day. Bam. Ah. All right. Let's 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 hear it. What is it? What could it be? There we go. Suggest all suggestions are welcome here. Yep. Let's see what comes through here. I I I, I don't like to post the obvious ones at first. I like I like posting the ones that are like 
fucking funny as fuck, you know? <laughs> God, everyone's like saying the same thing. Pretty obvious. I guess there's no humor in this, you know? <laughs> Come on. Somebody, will somebody say something funny? Jesus. Hold on. Let's see. All right, finally. Dead milkmen. <laughs> Good one. Fat monkey, you win. You win you win with this one. Hold on. Gilligan. <laughs> Good one. Gilligan. That's funny. Marauder. Funny you should say that. Is oh, that that's a right. is that AJ? It is. Hoobastank. Oof. Hoobastank. That band. Yeah, fuck Hoobastank. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Milkman, woot woot. Okay. Is that Eddie Sutton taking the microphone from his chest? It's like Alien. It's like <laughs> the scene in Alien. It's like coming out of his chest. Or he's doing like Pulp Fiction where he's stabbing it into his chest. Right. Uh, Slayer. Good one. Is this Slayer? Yes, it is. Is that the father from Modern Family? Pearl Jam. Nice. Good one. Uh, here we go. All right. Here we go. All right. <laughs> an, 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 enough. Is that Al? I'm not, I'm not sure. Aerosmith. Good one. That's a, Yes. Yes. That is Aerosmith playing CBGBs. <laughs> All right. Would it be Leeway, Leeway, Eddie Leeway? Eddie Leeway, Eddie Sutton, Leeway, Leeway at CBGB's, Leeway, 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 Leeway at CBGB's, Eddie Sutton, Leeway, Eddie Leeway, Eddie, <laughs> Eddie Leeway. Leebie-jeebies. All right, what do we got? Uh, actually, it's Leeway at CBGB's. <laughs> and it's... Wait, uh, another one you gave me. Wait, let me put up the other one. Yeah, the, I like the other one a lot. Well, the other one, I caught something in the other one that was interesting. Let's see if uh, anyone else can see it. Yeah. I caught something in this photo. I invite, I invite you at home to see. Uh, do you see who I see standing, uh, standing in the back there? Anybody? Um, let's see what comes up here. In the meantime, in the meantime, talk about what this is, where it's from, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, we've established that this is indeed leeway at CBGB's, and this is 2006. The show was leeway and ensign, and uh, this was, you know, February of 2006. So I don't remember what month uh, CB shut down, but it was in the last year of CBs and a lot of bands were coming out, uh, kind of coming out to play almost like pay their last respects to CBs and play their last shows. And, uh, it really was, um, I mean, all the shows were great at this point and, and leeway just ripped it up as, as, as always. And, uh, it just, uh, a pretty girl. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey Lori. But, uh, but what a, you know, I mean, the, one of those bands, like, you know, one of those, to me, one of those, like, perfect Seabees bands, you know? I mean, seeing Leeway there, and uh, it doesn't feel like 14 okay. years ago already. Everyone's responding. Angelina Jolie standing back there? <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Uh, yes, the first, one, the first one who got it was, uh, was Frankie Too Far. Yeah, that's Saab. I, I, I never noticed that. Um, that's Saab standing back there. Uh, you could tell. You could tell by the crucified skin tattoo on his forearm, behind behind the behind the skinhead guy. Oh yeah, I see him. Yeah, I see him. Yep. Uh, yes, that is Angelina jo Jolie. As we all know, she used to come to a lot of hardcore shows and <laughs> get in the pit and get jiggy with it. So, <laughs> you know, there you go. That was during the uh, Angelina Saab uh, years. Yeah, that's Brad, right. Before oh. Bad Pit came along. 
That's that's right. You know, little little known fact, Angelina Jolie, lover of New York hardcore. <laughs> Oh man! Somebody asked, "Is that toilet paper behind you, bro?" Um, behind me? Oh yeah, over here there is. Yeah, see. Oh, all right. Here, here. You need some? I got some. Here. I gotta wipe my ass. Let me get a roll of that. <laughs> hey, you know this is like gold in the pandemic. You kidding me? And you know what else I got here? Look at this. I got, I got government issue hand sanitizer, made by the prisoners. Wow. It's made by the the, the corrections. The New York State Corrections Department. So we don't do license plates anymore. They make hand sanitizer. Hey, listen, you know, got to do what you got to do. All right, man. I bring you. I'll bring you back on. Uh, I'll bring you back on towards the end, and we'll and we'll talk. We'll talk to our guest. You got it. I'll be in the box. See you later. What's happening? It's it is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush. Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, and your core hardcore page, fan page. New York Hardcore Comics opened back in 2013 when lifelong friends Debo to Pro and Lee Fairley combined their collection obsessions for comic books, punk rock, toys, statues, magic, the gathering, and all things horror. The store is located at 117 Main Street in lovely Dobbs Ferry, New York. If you want to support them during this pandemic, please contact them via email at newyorkhardcorecomics at gmail.com or any social media channel that said yo who's feeling the new york hardcore mug huh whoa official official new york hardcore live merch yeah we want we launched a merch line so for those that may not let me post it up you know what i need to write something underneath And fuck you is a little too obvious. So any suggestions like help me help you, um, you know, are, are, are welcome. Let me uh, let me post. Here is the merch link. I'm putting it in the chat room. Check out check out the merch. There's girl leggings. There's a New York hardcore shower curtain. There's there's the New York hardcore mug. Logo designed by Stephen Yui from Flyright Tattoo. Original artwork, especially for our show. Kind of dope. Kind of dope. New York Hardcore Socks. It's all right there. Just ordered the shower curtain. All right, you got to send me. You guys got to send me. You guys got to send me pictures when you get the merch. Will you send me some pictures? Uh, yes, we're working on the flamethrower, Lenny. You know, mean mugging. That's right. Yep. Do good things. It's a lot to fit on the bottom. Always, always imitated, never duplicated. What was it from? Remember the usual, the end of the usual suspects, when 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 he pulls the mug up and that's it. That that turns the whole thing. Um, there you go. So, yeah, there you go. Boy, the District Nine shirts getting mad love today, huh? Go figure. That was you that got the leggings, Laurie Dawn. All right. I saw that. That's awesome. Yes. Thank you, brother. Kubayashi Porcelain. That's right, Mike. Mar good call, Mike. Very good call. Always keep the faith. Good one, Joe James. Hope you're well, buddy. Hey, that said, um, what else do I need to bring up? Uh, I think we're good for now. Let's bring on our guest, man. You know, let's bring on our guest. Let's, let's get cracking here. Let me uh, let me clear the deck here of all this other stuff. You know, here we go. Here we go, yo. All right. Today's guest is an American hardcore punk and hip-hop recording artist, record producer, and actor hailing from the borough of Queens, New York. He is best known for his work with underground hip-hop acts, The Shop Lockers, Chaos 13 and FTW, and is also a founding member of the New York hardcore bands Crown of Thorns, Scarhead, and Ice Pick. Back on the show by popular demand, please welcome international superstar Danny Diablo. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> How are you, buddy? <sighs> All right, bro. Well, surviving, right? Doing what we have to do 
to do to survive. You mean? Did the food come? Yeah, I, 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 I haven't ate a fucking, I haven't ate meat in fucking like in two months. I fucking just went crazy. <laughs> two weeks, I mean, two weeks. <laughs> so, two weeks, two months. Hey, um, tell us about what's going on. Uh, for, let's just jump into it. You were you were out in Milwaukee recording, like what? And I played uh, that video. Was explain what what's going on with that? Well, that video that that that, that the cyclone video. Uh, yeah. Is a is a song I did off the um, Danny Diablo uh, fucking uh, the Cracks yeah. project I did like three years ago, but I never did any any videos for it. Like uh, I did, I needed to do a, a video, so I did a video for off that record and uh. DJ Kaz did a hook, and as a, we we basically uh, when I was in the studio, I made a beat with uh, sampling leeway. Where you guys have talked about leeway before the picture, so yes, yeah, sample leeway, and that's the part I, I, I rhymed over that, and uh, I had my 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 beautiful uh, better better half of me, my 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 woman, my lady uh, Alexandra Storm, Alexandra Rose Storm. She's in the video. She's fucking. Uh, She's like the like when we, when we were young, we saw Jessica Hahn and we went crazy. She's like the new like that. She's that's so, like thirteen year olds are looking at her now like that. You're know, like like, like in high school like oh my god. You know what I mean it's funny. I was just thinking about that. You know how crazy is that, man? Yeah. You know so we did. I did that. So basically, I'm going back to Milwaukee. I I, I, I when I was in Milwaukee, I did a street CD which um came out. The first one came out like 2001. The second one came out 2005. Wow. You know what I mean so. DJ Kaz, who who used to be my my DJ, um, I got him back to host just to host it to host it and do some hooks and he, he he actually did two songs with me two new songs with me rhyming rapping and stuff like that and he, he and he has a great voice so you know what you know what he kind of does man he has a great fucking voice you know, he he knows how to sing and smoke dust so yo those two, two good those two good traits to have like it, it's. <laughs> Not to smoke dust, but if you could smoke dust and handle it, yeah, I, I don't know about that, but <laughs> but check but check out he uh, <laughs> it's, it's Danny Diablo, the Street CD Volume Number Three. It's called the Triz. So yeah, that that's and I'll be out on Force Five Records. Uh, and tomorrow, at 8, I'm leaving at eight a.m. in the morning to go back to Milwaukee. I'm doing the new Scarhead uh, record. I guess uh, we got signed by Force Five Records. Nice. And, uh, it's, it's an EP. I, uh, I'm I'm leaving with Zach. Shout out to Zach and shout out to Demi. They're coming with me. You know what I mean? Um, what, and, 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 Reek, and, Reek uh, power. Yeah, to to to, to, God, to, to God in Malacca. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're coming out there recording with me. Uh, 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 Force Five Records signed us. And I'm doing the, the EP's called Scarhead Generators of Violence. Nice. Yeah. So. Oh man, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be straight fucking hard. It's gonna be one of the hardest shit. It's gonna be like the first EP, the first thing that drugs my sex would be hey, like that. Hey, listen, if you're going to Milwaukee, it's got to be hard. It's, it, you, know, you know what? Milwaukee, the Midwest, is, 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 it makes sense why people move to like places like that because it's so much cheaper. Especially if you're in the band and you don't have to hang out with the assholes anymore. You just uh, go on under 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 under. under on the internet and be like, hey, hey, what's up, guys? So you're like, I'm still, you mean? So it's cool. You don't get in trouble. And you, you, everything's cheaper. You can buy a house out there for fucking $70,000. Yeah, the thing is that the winter will fucking destroy you out there, man. But what, what are you doing with winter anyway? We, we, at our age, it's just stuff to keep warm, right? Fuck yeah. your girl and watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, a question from Upstate Rick. Will it be female friendly? What the uh, Scarhead? Hell yeah. no! Hell no! I mean, listen, guys. I, I, I'm I'm about changing the times and stuff like that. I, I, I do need all that stuff. I do need. Hey, listen, I, I listen. All the politics and everything. But how the fuck am I gonna do a Scarhead record? It's gonna be female friendly. I can't. I, I listen to all the girls out there. I I love and adore you all. I was just saying. I, I, I'm just saying, Scarhead, Scarhead. You know what I mean? The nature of a beast. It's like, it's like if you don't want, don't listen to Scar Record. It's like if, 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 uh, uh, it's like you could jog at Central Park. It's your, you have the right to do it. 
You know, it's your body and everything. But if, if you jog Central Park at 10 o'clock, you're, you're pretty fucking stupid. You know what I mean? If you're going to listen to the Scarhead record and you're a female, don't get offended. Don't get offended. You know, I'll be making fun of people too, but guys also. It's all good. Uh, here's a question from our friend John Rock, Johnny Rock 74. Are you doing anything with The Grizz these days? So, shout out to Frankie Ferraro, The Grizz. That's Grizz. He he has a pizzeria. His pizzeria is up in uh you know in Greenwich, Greenwich, uh, Connecticut, and in and, and uh right over there. Uh, what's the, what's it called? I, forget, I totally forgot. Right by the Bronx. But but he's he, Grizz is a dope dope MC. Frankie, um, I love the Grizz. And yes, <laughs> I love the Grizz. The um, Grizz Grizz was on was on Ill Rock Records. We're doing something. We're doing KS thirteen again. Me and Grizz. Oh, cool. So it's cool. Yeah, Frankie's a good guy. Good. Yo, he was, he was so crazy. Frank, Frankie Farrell's sister, brother, went to school with my girlfriend. Wow. And out of nowhere. How weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> that that's fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, our friend Bernardo says, for sure, OG hardcore girls can handle it and not feel offended or nothing. Yeah. All in good humor. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like my, my girl is, is that generation of what's going on now, and she's like, she tells me what I could say and you can't say. So it's yeah, kind of, right. She's like, she's like my proofreader. Yeah, it's good to have a little <laughs> bit of that. It's good. It's good to have a little bit of that right now, right? Yeah, definitely. Because I, because I say, you know, I'm you know, Drew. I'm, we say whatever we want to say. You know, it's fucked up. But well, but but that's called freedom of speech. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't know. Well, they say freedom of speech unless you use it, right? Um, yes. Listen, one thing I love about you, bro, is you know you put it all out there, man. You 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 don't you 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 are who you are. And 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 I love you for that, man. You you don't you don't you just put it out there. You you know. Well, like, true. I, do coke. I, I, I don't know if that's the case, but the great line, yo, I do coke and fuck strippers. Fuck you. It, 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 you know what? A lot of these, a lot and I'm not playing that up. I'm not no, playing no, no, that no, no, no. up. Listen, listen, listen. I'm just saying. A lot of people out here pretend a big game, whatever. So you get whatever you get from me is face value. You know I mean like like like. Uh, it, it, it's good, you know. I, mean? I, I love it, but it's also bad because it, 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 uh, when it comes down to like record deals and stuff, labels like that, you know the deal. Like uh, people freak out on me, like, "Oh, you did this." And I said, "Yo, listen, Bob Marley, the, no the nicest guy in the world, used to go up to his record label and shake him down when they when they stole his money." You know what I mean? So I, I'm just a man. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if someone disrespects me a certain way, I, I deal with a certain way. I'm not going through lawyers. I'm not doing that. And also, I've been signed big time. You know, I got signed by Travis Barker. Tim Armstrong, uh, uh, you know, big labels, Sub Noise, and they always, it's always a double-edged sword. They, they, you know, they got a street guy who's really great, you know, the, the image, but they know that I can flip in a second. You know I mean, but I, I, but I won't flip in a second for no reason. If you're not, if you, if you, if I say, hey, I'm gonna do this, I shook your hand, and I don't, and I don't do it for you. You have every right to be mad at me. You know I mean? right? That That's how sense. the world should should be. Just shake your hand. Yes, I'll do it, and you go by your word. That's how it is. It's a crazy world right now, man. You know, you, you know, I haven't. I, it's like crazy when you think about. It. Like, I haven't seen you in person in over half a year. That's, that's a, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I'm saying, if you understand, yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's like, yeah, you were down in Florida, but I've been, I've been here, and I've been, I've been traveling just to do my music and back and forth, man. It's just like. It's it's nuts. I've been to, well, I'm happy. I'm locked. I've been here, you know, with my my lady. So she, it was cool, you know. So that, that that's cool. But then even then, it's like you know, one, day, you know, it's so much. You mean fine? You you, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that you know perseverance pays off, and yeah. you've hung in there a long time, and you have a good work ethic, and you yeah. work hard, man, and you do a lot of shit. And it, it, it really makes me happy to see some of the stuff that you're doing now, you know, especially, you know, this, this you're doing some acting stuff with, yeah, our, yeah, yeah. with our friend Peter Green and yeah. you did the film Priceless. Tell us a little bit about uh, about the film Priceless and what's going on with that. Well, this is uh, few, years, a few years ago. I met uh, this guy named Tom uh, uh, Vujic. Well, he's uh, he used to be go around with Necro, do all the videos, Ill Bill, you know, Excel, Swain, uh, uh, all it, uh, uh, Necro, Mr. Hyde, he used to do all these videos for, for, for the underground, cool G rap, everyone. And he came to my house in uh, it must have been when my son was born, like the right, like two, 2010 or something, like, that, like two, two, two years like that. But he came to my house for a barbecue 
And I, I, I say, yeah, the, the other guy couldn't do it. I said, he's coming to my house. He came. It was a big, was all the all the DMS brothers were there. It was a big thing we do. And um, he became, he was a, he's a metal head. So he was like, yeah, I do, I love metal. I love blah, blah. Then we became boys. And he came down to uh, to New York once to, uh, to do something. I got him a space when I was doing Diablo's Wednesdays in Brooklyn. So I got him a space to, to film with his acts. So then I started fil- working with him. He's like, yo, I'm doing a movie, bro. You'd be perfect for this for this role. I was like, I'm down, bro. Yo, but I didn't know it was a a, a script written for me. You know what I mean, it was like the whole thing was written for fucking me. And I thought I was just gonna be like an extra in the back. You know what I mean, like like you know I mean like like just playing the dope, but a, a character actor. But I played this dude named Viper. Um, it's, it's funny when they give you names like that. It's, it's, it's always like a B movie, like bad Viper, Viper, Viper. Spider. Viper. Or something. Yeah, my name was Vice Spider. I was I was Viper, protected by Viper. <laughs> Evan, Evan Spider was Spider. <laughs> so so I so I did I did the thing and, and I got Peter Green. I said Peter, listen, they want you to that you Peter. They're gonna pay you. Word, I didn't get paid for shit. So, but Peter, did, I, Peter, I, did Peter get paid a little bit? I, no, no, what? I, yeah, you know what? I I I didn't get paid money, but he he's doing my he's doing two videos for me, which is the it's a barter. It was a barter. Yeah. Well, it was my boy. So at plus I wanted even, I, I he believed in me. I said I could kill I, I could kill this, bro. And I did it. And fucking we're like, all right. And then then of course the New York Hawkeye curse happened. Because I was like, oh shit. I said, you know about the New York hardcore curse. And we all know about this fucking curse. I'm a New York hardcore guy. Of course I know about it. <laughs> so basically anything that's attached with the New York hardcore name, no matter how dope you think you escape it, like you'd be like, oh shit. You'd be like Oh shit! I'm playing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm playing. Like, I'm opening up for, for, for fucking, uh, you know, like prong. I'm opening up for, uh, for uh, Ozzy. No one cares. You mean to be like, no one in the front row? Or, or we're you playing. We're, we're playing a big outdoor show. It rains. It rains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything like all the bands that has been down for, with our scene, prong, uh, quicksand, all those guys who made it. They yeah. made it, but all of a sudden it went, yeah, boom. It's like, what the fuck? Woo, Yo, the, me. I got signed by Travis Barker. Yeah. <laughs> mayday, mayday, mayday. <laughs> so it's a New York Hawker curse. So I was like, yeah, but I'm going to do all the film festivals this summer. Bah! And all of a sudden, COVID. Nothing. So so we were like, fuck, we'll do it next year. So he so he, so he submitted all these things. And all of a sudden, the indie late uh, the LA in the in the uh film festival, the in the X film festival, they they were like, yo, we 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 got you thing, we're doing a virtual thing. I was like, oh, so we got nominated. I was like, how do he call me? And I was like, how the fuck we get nominated? He goes, I don't know. And you, and you not only did the film get nominated, but you and Peter got nominated, right? Yeah, yeah just this was crazy. So so it's, it's, he said, No, listen, they nominated best director for a short short horror film. And, and it's, it's like a how, long drama. Run? how long does the film run? Ah, it's, it's tw- twenty minutes most. A smart move, man. He's a smart guy making a short film like Yo, that. So, so it was, it was, it, it, so it was, and, and you know, it's even it, it, it harder to do a short film because it's like she had to put everything together. So I was like, all right. Then all of a sudden he goes, no, you've been nominated for best uh, best acting duo. I was like, what? I say, look, this LA Indie Film Festival extra. So it's a big LA. That's all you have to say. All the, every actor in the world is like, you know, their film festival is given to me. And, and we won. And yo, and me and Peter killed it. it was, and when I saw it, it, it made me feel so good when I saw it, in, it was, uh, at the premiere in, in Brooklyn. And um, I was like, yo, this is uh, it, it, it bothered me because I, when I left, I, I was like, when COVID here, I said, this, that's what happens. I, said, I just so a great piece of work, and no one's going to see it. And this happened. So I'm, I'm just blessed. And shout out to Tom uh, from, from Real Wolf. He, he's the director. All His whole team, everyone that was involved with it, thank you so much, man. They, they, you guys, it wasn't for you guys. You, this is my dream. This is my dream, man. I want to do acting. I always I always said, everyone else was like, yo, you got to do acting. I'm, I'm going to be like Vin Diesel, Mr. Danny Trejo. Thank you guys like that. <laughs> But better looking. Um, people are asking what the name of the film was again. It's called Priceless. 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 It's not it's- out. It'll be, it'll be out next year because they, we're, we're doing all the circuits now. And there's a whole bunch of other film festivals now. It's going to once that's done next year. It'll be a uh, people will be able to see it, view it. 
You know? I'm so up. Listen, man, I'm so happy for you, dude. From, Thank you. I mean, you know, that, dude, that, that means a lot to coming from you because you're, 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 that's your business. That's your, that's your, that's your, that's your, your, your life's blood. You mean like a film and, and, and music here. So it, that from, from you, not just being a fucking film, but you're a director. So basically, it's like from a director's point of view, like, yo, actors are, you know, whatever, director, anyone can be an actor. You can't be, not everyone can be a director. Well, listen, you know, one of these days, and I have a script, one of these days, I'm going to direct you and Peter Green in a film. And, can, and I I, him? can I kill him? <laughs> in the, in the, I want to kill Peter Green in the film. <laughs> Let's just hope he makes it long enough to shoot the fucking film, all right? Oh, oh. yeah, I told, I told, I, I said, he's in the film. I, and I, I love, I love fucking Peter, man. Peter, I do. Peter Green. Is is one of us. He's fucking one of the most realist people in the world. He's you know he's like, like I, I've been a friend for them now for over twenty something years. So it's like always great. Uh, he's my he's my brother. I lived with him for over five years. It's, he's my brother. I'm so he, ain't, happy. he ain't even trying to be something he's not. He's, no, no, no. He's like no. He's a dope, he's a how dope of an actor. Is, 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 is. Every every scene he does in every movie. You remember Peter Green? I got to get him on the show, man. I got. I, got no, to go get, I have yeah. to go there the night before. And make sure I go, make yeah. sure he's there. That's Keep why. It. That, that's why I got. If I do a film, I got to have the both of you guys in it because I know you guys will be out partying the whole night before. <laughs> at, least, at least I know that if you're with him, yeah, I can grab are, him. Yeah. It, yeah, right. <laughs> Shout out. I love you, Peter Green. Yeah, for sure. Hey, um, what was um, what was the other thing? Oh, oh yeah, I gotta ask you about this, man. Well, I, I came across this, and this is the fucking best shit, man. Mark Toll says, "Gotta get Danny to talk about his Cameo account." Oh yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, I went on Cameo today, and I saw your stuff on Cameo. It was it was so good, man. Now, it, let me explain to people what Cameo is, if they don't know. No, no, no. Cameo is like a site that, that you go to and you can have people, actors, musicians, all kinds of people. And they will, if you tell them, uh, you, you pay them and they give you like a personal message, like a happy birthday, like, yo, Joe Schmo, this is Drew Stone. I want to wish you a happy birthday. But Snoop Dogg's on there, you know, Scott Everyone's on there and motherfucking Danny Diablo's on there too. And I saw... I saw a couple of yours today, bro. You it, you had me. The hell's going on over there? <laughs> oh, I'm running over shit here. You had me laugh out loud. I love because one guy's from Chicago, and you got right on there, and you fucking you started it on Chicago. That was awesome. Yeah. So t tell us about the cameo thing. It's awesome, and you do a great job with it. Right, thank you, Studio. That means that it's all right. This is that's what I'm saying. How crazy life is. So Jay Reason was like submitting me to cameo like a year ago. Who and did? Sudden, Who did? Jay Reason. Do you have to be submitted to it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, no, no. It's like they hit him up. So he's they, they, somehow Jay Reason gave the paperwork, and then they put, they, he went to cameo, whatever. And, right. and they, they they look through it. And they, right. they, they called and said, yo, the people in Cameo that work in the office are fans of mine. So, ah. yeah, so they're like, yo, definitely, we would do whatever. So, they, so now I'm out, I, I did already like 36 Cameos. It's, That's it's awesome. Cool. It's cool. If you have a band, if you have a band or, or, or you have a, 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 let's say, it'd be like, Dan, it'd be like they, they tell me what to say. So I'll be like, yo, I'll be like, Drew Stone, New York Hawker Chronicles, the best shit ever. Volume, blah, blah 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 blah. Go watch it right now. And they, they, all these kids are putting it on their their, their, their recordings. Or like me, <laughs> documentaries. I'm talking about them. Hey, what's up? I love blah, blah blah. It's it's so cool, man. Because like it's all fans. I haven't got any dick ones. Because some people like say some dick shit. You know I mean, but they haven't done to me. But like, but they 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 tell make usually want me to make fun of their friends or threaten their boy or like say something to their yeah. girlfriend. Which weird shit was funny. It, it, I always make it funny. You know I mean? But Jay, the guy, thank, shout out to all the people in Cameo. Uh, all uh, Brandon from Cameo, thank you so much. Uh, it's 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 fucking great, man. It's fucking great. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, a I, I, I'm a celebrity. 
I'm, it's a celebrity thing. How fucked up is that? No, it's 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 awesome. And I I I I like was it, it was I I went I took an hour and like Alice Cooper, Snoop Dogg, yeah, every, I, every, I, everyone, YouTube, you know. The, the guys, the guys with chips. <laughs> yeah, the guys with chips. Yo, motherfucking Nadia Comaneci. Yeah, you know, it was crazy. Like, Ivan Lendl, a tennis player. Like, what the? Fuck? Well, Paulina. <laughs> <laughs> it's like weird, right? Right. That's it's awesome, man. That that's it's good. It's good, man. It, it, it's good to get out there with that kind of stuff. Just like yeah. me, just like me doing the show here. It's yeah, like it, 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 you know what? Get your face out there, and it's it, one. It's it, it, people when people. People recognize what you're doing when you do it. When you're doing it, like when do it, like uh, when you do hard work, people recognize it, bro. And like, that's a, that's yeah. a big thing about about everyone can say whatever they want to say about us, Drew. You know I mean like it, you know people? Some people's like this, that, but my work ethic is is impeccable. I mean, it's, I, no matter what, I'm going. No matter what, if, if I can't do it this way, I'm finding a way to go this way. You know I mean around it, but I'm going to get to my goal. No matter, I'm going straight to my goal and. And I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm usually help a lot of people all the time. I mean, like always put people on, bring people on tour, give people chances. Oh, wait, you never recorded a record before, or someone? And you uh, and, 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 and they they always want to record a record. All of a sudden, I'm like, hey, come with us. I'll show you how the studio is and record. And, you know, a lot of people forget about that. A lot of, like like Jimmy Gustavo was one of the first people I know. Mm -hmm. like, I know it changes people, but he put a lot of people on. Like, oh. You know, the Murphy's Law, these new kids who talk like they play. They, most of these people have never been out of, out of New York City, you know? So I always like, uh, I, like, I try to help people out, man. You mean? Know? I just, it, it's, it's, I, but I learned now that, that, uh, it, when someone says thank you to me for helping them out, it's more than money. It makes me happier than more than anything. That's all. Recognition. I, recognition. I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> hey, I got a couple of pictures. Let's throw yeah. up a couple of pictures and just bug out on them. All right. All right. This is this is one that came up recently. I, I, I haven't. I mean, it came up. I know you've seen it. It's done the rounds, but it, it's a really nice shot. And and I and I and I love that you got and I love that you got a basketball in your hand. Oh, good, good, good. You, you, uh, thank God you took out the other guy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's that's me. Freddie, Tommy Conan, and mm -hmm. Toby. Uh, I, I play basketball all the time, my whole life, and this is my has to be ninety one. Yeah, this looks like it, it has uh, to be nine, 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 because I'm I'm not cut yet. I'm not stabbed up yet, so I guess yeah, stand. yeah, it's before, yeah, it's not it's got to be ninety one. Ninety one. Yeah, great shot, man. Crazy, right? Tompkins Square Park. I play playing ball. That's what I thought. Tompkins Square Park. It just has. Yeah. It just now. <clears throat> It looks like it looks like basketball diaries. It kind of does. <laughs> it it kind of them. Oh, oh, oh! We got it. We got a question uh, from someone. Oh, uh, says, oh. ask, ask him about his ankle injury that kept him from the NBA. <laughs> oh, all right. Listen. First of all, listen. Listen. Hoyer. I used to play ball all the time. So Hoyer, Hoyer, and MQ used to come when. It, before I met Hoy MQ, I was a good kid. I played. I, I, all I did was play basketball, and I was fucking. I didn't even know what. I didn't even know what drugs were. I didn't know weed, nothing, and and I didn't know about anything. I was just like a little bit. I was doing graffiti, but I had to play ball. And these guys would come to me to the park and be like, "Yo, hurry up, hurry up, bro!" And I, and and I, and I was like, "Yo, bro, I'm playing ball." Be they're like, "Fuck that, you mean let's go." So I, they used to hate it, those guys. But hurry, hurry up, we gotta go do bad things. Do bad thing. We gotta go in the city and fucking do masculine and <laughs> fucking drink forties a cra crazy horse. You know what I mean? <laughs> and ride on walls and break shit. You know I mean fight people? You know I mean? So that's what that was happening. So, but in, in a tenth grade, eleventh grade, I broke my ankle playing ball, and I said, and I, I and I. And I, was, I, and I was a cast for the whole time. The whole time. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, it was crazy. So, how'd you break your ankle? How'd you jumped, break your ankle? I tried. I, <laughs> I jumped. <laughs> I jumped down, down 
We played the volume back in the, back in. The, I'm going to talk the way how we speak. Let me guess. You were. You, let me guess. You were running from the cops after. No, 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 no. <laughs> Brian High School. This is it. So basically, we one day we had the worst class ever. The worst, right. worst. I'm talking about the worst gym class in the world. And they were like, "Yo, but today you guys are going <laughs> to play the fucking the, pe the people that don't speak English." And I was like, "Oh man, here it goes." Like who evil motherfucker did this? It was like every bad kid, but every bad kid was in this gym class, all colors, all races, right? And they're like, all right, the basically the, the the slow class with the, the with the the slow retarded kids with the, the people who can't speak English will be in that class, and you got to go against them. Yo, we the volleyball, we would play. They didn't understand the the, the thing, the the. the they didn't stand the direction. So the first thing we did was when the ball picked up, they looked at stand there, bah, right in the face, break the glasses. You know, the Chinese people, we were fucking these people up. And somehow, 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 my boy Thomas Bowden, who grew up at Jackson Heights with me, he fucking fucked up the end of the game. They beat us. They beat us. So I tried to kick him down the stairs. I jumped down the stairs, a whole flight, missed him, and snapped my fucking ankle when we landed on the floor in the, in the hallway. <laughs> I had a limp all the way into, into, into the classroom. My my thing blew up, and I had a limp all the way to the the, the down. No one helped me oh. in high school, and my father picked me up. We had and I, I had to go. I had to go to the fucking uh hospital, and the, the, the doctor was like, "But the doctor's like, all right, we need to give you surgery." And my father was like, "Well, the fuck is basketball up?" My father thought I was gonna play basketball, like oh. college basketball. I was, he's like, "Well, the fuck it up," and my dad. Please just give me the surgery. I mean, let's go. He's like, he goes, if you get the surgery, you're gonna be a half a step slower. Oh, yo, this is how crazy my dad was. I was like, a half step, half a second, a second slower. He says, so play basketball and it'll fuck you, it'll affect your your playing basketball. And I was like, and then the doctor goes, there's a 50 50 chance if you let it just heal like this without the surgery, they'll they'll heal. So when he took it off, he was like, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> I can't play. Oh. So that's why he's making fun. Of, that's why Hoyer is making fun of my ankle, which is a fucking, which, which was very heartbreaking to me when I was a kid. I couldn't play basketball anymore. So Hoyer, I hope you feel better about yourself now. Yeah. So it said the Brian. You went to Brian High School. Brian yeah. High School. Brian High School. Dare like, like diaries, like the basketball. Oh, player, the oh, Brian God. High School. I, 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 I like this one. Uh, looking at this picture reminds me of back in the yard in CDC. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fucked up. laughs> <laughs> Here, here's another one. Listen, listen. We're just, we're just, we're just throwing it out there, yeah. right? Here's another one that they came up in my in, in the archives. Boom. Fuck is that? Oh wait, that's that's me. Look at oh shit. That's Coney Island High. That's Coney Island High. <clears throat> that's um, Crown of Thorns. Yes. Coney Island High. Uh, is it, huh? Is that Mitch playing guitar? It looked, I thought it was Mikey. I thought it was Dijon. Is that Dijon or Mitch? Seriously, that, what is that? It has to be Mike Dijon, right? But it looks like Mitch. <laughs> it's a hybrid. <laughs> oh. Hi, Mitch. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Coney Island, so so a little bit on, on Crown of Thorns. Uh, this this got to be, this this has to be 94, 95. 95, 95. That's for, yeah, the, yeah. That's the, that's so crazy. Wherever it is, it is fucking it has, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the outdoors always shows were great, man. No matter what, always had a great time. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. Let me see what else I got. Um, got a couple more. Uh, well, this this one came up. This one came up. This one's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> this is a flyer. Remember this place, Tramps? Yes, yes. Tramps. Yes. Look at that. Look at that, Bill. Huh? What's what's the opening band? H two O, Crown of Thorns, Fifty One, and Shutdown. Good. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, yeah. That's good. That's cool. Tramps. Good place. I, I like I like Tramps. Uh, uh, had a great stage. Yeah, it was good. Good shit. Hey. Um, <clears throat> Stick me, stick with me a second. Let me shout out some sponsors. We'll come back. We'll take some questions. All right. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yo, what's happening? It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, the Organic Grill, 
your core hardcore fan page, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, and the Texas Silver Rush. Your core fan page is a digital platform aimed at capturing hardcore punk bands in real time and get up-to-date information on what they're doing now. Also, the page is focused on promoting and supporting bands, the venues, and merchandise through the Instagram app on your core <coughs> fan page. Excuse me. Also, while we're at it, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards is located in Lakewood, Colorado. It's the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and metal. Established in 2014, they have the largest selection of records, CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories between Chicago and Los Angeles. From the pit to the ditch, they've got your back. Get in touch with them at www.chainreactionrecords.com. That said, a couple people are asking about the merch. Boom. There's the merch. Check it out. Uh, lots of good stuff. Hold on. Where's that merch? Where's that merch? Here it is. Where's that merch at? Here you go. The merch featuring. We got the New York hardcore. We got the New York hardcore phone case. We got the comforter. We got, we got the mug, sweatshirt. How about, how about the New York hardcore shower curtain? Huh? Got the shower curtain. Got the socks. Got the girls' leggings. Pack your ass in that, women. Pack your ass in those leggings. Uh, the socks, oh, the pillow. Listen, we all know what the pillow's good for, right? So there you go. We got the pillow. There it is. Um, check it out. I'll post it in the. Uh, I'll post it in the chat room as well. Hold on. Hold your horses. Hey, the holidays are coming up too. The holidays are coming up. Get get your man, get your man, that pillow. We all we all we all. Nah, I'm not on the. Listen, I no beanie hats yet. Um, I I'm trying to do something a little different, like other than t-shirts and sweatshirts. I'm leaving the baseball. I'm leaving the baseball caps to Danny Diablo and and, and Hoya. You know, let those let those you know let those guys. They got their hustle. Uh, you, you know, you know. I'm not trying to fuck with their hustle. Um, I'm trying to do some different shit. The pillow, the socks, the phone case, the tote bag, the leggings, shit like that. Um, so there's that. Um, you know what? Did I delete the towel? No, there's a towel. No, there is a towel, man. There's, there, there's a towel. You know? Looks good. Great logo. What's up, Busky? Hope you're well. Yeah, the pillow's good for stuffing for stuffing someone's face. It's also good for propping up your girl's ass. So, yeah, the leggings are cool for, for sure. So that said, um, yo, and Hoya too. Hoya got a great hustle. Hoya's got great. Hoya, you're on. You're on it, Hoya. I love the stuff that you do. Yeah, the bed. Yeah, I'm like the Bed Bath and Beyond guy of the New York hardcore scene. You know, um, Busky. I'm like the Bed Bath and Beyond motherfucker. You know what I mean? Um, oh, can ease out? Can he, okay, yeah, we'll get we'll get him going on, on that. Um, I'm a good guy. Well, thanks. I'm trying. Uh, that said, also I want to mention the Patreon page. The Patreon page, www.patreon.com. Listen, that's how we do the show. You support the show; it enables me to do the show. Please. Don't be just, don't be a lurker. Enough fucking we got enough lurkers out there. You know? Enough lurkers. Go participate. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on on the Patreon page. It's our community within this community. I'm posting stuff on there all the time. I just posted some never before seen minor threat photos, uh, all kinds of videos. Just go check it out. That's the Patreon page. Um there you go. More beyond than bed, bath, and be more human than human. A a absolutely. There you go. Patreon crew united and strong. So yeah, go go check out the Patreon page, and buy some merch. The holidays are coming up, will you? I gotta pay my rent around here. So that said, um, oh, 
Hold on. Let me get rid of that. What else? Oh, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking right now. Does Drew have any really dope shows that he needs to announce? I do. So I'm going to announce this show. Uh, let me get rid of all this other crapola. Here we go. Coming up. Hold on. Let me. I want. I want to give it like full. I want to give it the full blast. Hold on. We did that one already. Where the hell is it? Hold on. Hold on. Here it is. Okay. You hear it here first, boys and girls. Coming up, Sunday, October 18th. This is a good one. For all you guitar players out there, Paige Hamilton from Helmets coming on the show. Yep. This is going to be good. We're going to talk gear, get a lot, a lot of guitar gear. Zum is going to come back on the show from Fryette because, uh, you know, Paige is a, is a Fryette guy. Uh, he plays Fryette gear. So we're going to bring Zum on to talk. But listen, Paige Hamilton, great guy, helmet, great band. Got, you know, there's a New York hardcore tie in, you know, Rob Escheveria from, from Rest in Pieces and Biohazard, you know, played in helmet. So there's a lot to talk about with Paige. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, kind of stoked on that. Yeah, man. Good one, right? Got some other stuff cooking too. Uh, got, got a, a very cool uh, female musician actress coming up. I can't announce it yet, um, but it's a very cool show. If you want a hint, uh, she's on a show called uh, Orange is the New Black. So there you go. There, there, there's, there's, there's your clue. Also, don't forget this guy. I, kn I know this is one of Danny Diablo's favorites. We got Toby Morse coming on the show. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey did, did I make you laugh? Did I make you I'm laugh? Funny, bro. Funny. I just did him up. I just did it. He just did my show. Um, the Diablo's Den podcast. Shout out to Jay Reason, Toby, Insane Poetry. Uh, Diablo's Den podcast is my podcast, and it's fucking dope. <laughs> good. So, yeah, Toby's coming on the show. Toby. Uh, you know, that's a good combination. Like, Toby, Mr. Straight Edge Guy, and, and like, and you, you guys must have had a lot to talk about. Talk to you know what's funny? At the, we we spoke a lot about the, when we first met each other. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. It was a cool interview. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to uh, to having him on. I was never, you know, it's it's going to be an interesting show because I was never pals with Toby. Like he was never. I was, you know, we weren't very close. So yeah. you know, should be should be interesting. You know, not that there was a problem. But you know how it was, you know, you know how it was back then. Either you were kind of in the biohazard camp or in the sick of it all camp. And yeah. I was, I was deep in the biohazard camp. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah, definitely. So that said, um, okay, let's take some questions for Danny Diablo here. Um, put, you know, lay, lay it in there. Um, I can smoke weed, right? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Look, blaze up. <laughs> Roll up, lays up. Um, here you go. If anyone likes Scarhead, I've made about four Scarhead fan-made videos. They're on my playlists. All right, you got fans that make videos, man, huh? Uh, just, uh, just uh, do me a favor. Um, DM me, Instagram, the, the link, whatever, just so I can see it. That's all. Cause yeah. I'm, cause I'm high right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. What do we got? All right. Here's one for you. Dijon mitts or Matty pasta? I can fuck all three of them up. But we're <laughs> well, okay, but, oh, guitar? <laughs> guitar? All right. I'm going to go right now. Oh, Hoy is fucking loving this one. <laughs> Yo, Busky. Paul. Here it goes. Check it out. Dijon mitts. Or Matty Pasta. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Did I just burn something a little bit? Oh, so I think it's it. So there's a, but great, all, all three great guitar players. Uh, all three, I'm, I don't take shit away from people. All three great guitar players. Uh, Mitz, 
I know Hoyer says all the time, it wasn't for me, Mitch, we were still playing the Battle of the Bands in, 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 in Long Island somewhere, or somewhere in the basement. But but Mitch is a good good guitar player, uh, solid guitar player, solid, solid guitar player. Um, Mike DeJean is a, will always be a, the first guitar player I've ever worked with, you know what I mean? And what, no matter how we, we always argue in just two different worlds, uh, something about Mike DeJean's music it touches the inner souls of people. So that's fucking amazing. You know what I mean? So like he he learned from AJ Novello and uh you know AJ is a great rhythm guitar player, you know right? So but Mike DeJohn could write music. You know, he could write, right? He could write. Um uh, Matty Pasta, one of the well, total retard, but one of the one of the best best. Matty Pasta got the it's like Todd Youth when it comes to the soul. You know what I mean? There's no one. The best guitar player in New York hardcore history ever was was Todd, was Todd Youth. I don't care what any all these guys say or how great they are with the, this record. No one could play like Todd Youth. Matty Pasta could play like Todd Youth when it comes to so he's like more metal and soul and blues. You know what I mean, so so the, do I like playing the best out of all three of those guys? I don't know because it's it's uh, it, it, I, I, I I I like Mike Desjardins dope with, with his thing, but Matty Pasta to me. Was was dope on stage because I could I could I could be let's do a jam session or something. Um, I, you mean you mean I, I, like 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 Maddie Pasta could play everything. You mean Maddie Pasta? Who, who, stre who stresses you out the most of the three? Ooh, it depends. Different stress. Oh, ah, it's got to be Dijon, man. The the Dijon is stubborn. Yeah, uh, right. You no, know, how, how much? How many? Uh, how many uh, uh, gurus he goes to, and, 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 and how much? How much <laughs> he's still a story of white trash, and he will. <laughs> story of white trash, as we know, is very stubborn. So, so, but still, it, we love, we love it. it. You know, but Maddie Pasta, it, 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 the one that gets on the, the, the one that gets on me the most the, on my nerves is definitely Mitz. That's your boy. M Mitz could get um, Mitz could get on anyone's nerves. But 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 he's a good guy. You know what I mean? But but all three of them great guitar players. All three of them price think the same as me. They they probably this guy's fucking crazy. You know what I mean? So but, but all three right things probably like fucking that guy's fucking amazing. You know I mean? So imagine what they say about me. So I'm, I'm going in. So what I'm saying. So yeah. all three of them great great guitar players, and I I and I love working with all three of them. See, I'm, I'm being nice. See, well well done. Great uh, great guitar players. And no why because they have they have the metal edge. Here's a question from Pizza Machine. Did you write the lyrics to Rebirth, one of the best Scarhead songs? You 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 actually you actually like like the lyrics. So check this out. Rebirth, right? One of the fucking best lyrics ever. But check this out. There's a, I write all my lyrics, but there's a, there's a few lyrics that like when I'm doing something, someone might send something to me. Rebirth was a poem. Like uh I'm. I'm. Uh, was a poem. Uh, was a poem written like the fat. That all that that, that that all of that those lyrics from the fast parts to the end happiness and love. All that was a poem written by my friend Yas, who who, who killed himself. Mm. Before he died. He wrote mm. a poem. It's about and the poem. Those things are like it's a fucked up dark poem he wrote before he died, right? But I wrote the lyrics in the beginning, my shiny star above so bright. All those lyrics in the beginning, that right before the fast part, is me writing about him, about him, because he killed himself. He did a whole bunch of drugs. So I'm the, then I say his part. I was like, I'm going to use his poem, man, for the song after he passed away. And I and use it, but it's I'm talking about Yas. And Got it. Uh, limbs are cramping, numb numbness sets in and edges of sanity. Like that. That's and so it's that means a lot to me. That thing. So basically, I'm writing about my friend who killed himself and had a, a horrible drug problem. And it was just it was we were young and and, and it was just you know uh, uh, you know people. People don't know how to uh, deal with stuff, so they, so we all turn to uh, different ways to get uh, help us to cope. And his thing was coke. I mean, and, and it, it, it did so much 
it's fucked up. Yeah, some people can't deal with some some certain substances, and, and, and this and suicide is a big thing. No matter no matter what in life you're gonna do, it's always there. It's always there. That that, that was in his thing. You know what I mean so? Got it. It's, yeah, but I, Yas, I love you, brother. You were Yas, Yas. So yeah, me and Yas wrote that 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 rebirth, and it, it is one of my favorite fucking songs ever. Chucky Brown from uh, our good friend from Crazy Yeti. What's um, up? Chuck? Yep. Says, uh, you know, you know, I got to say to Chucky, man, Chucky, you really come up with really well thought out good questions. And I thank you for that. Chucky says, is rapper Big Left from La Coca Nostra going to be featured on the new Scarhead album? Uh, well, that's crazy because I'm leaving. I'm leaving at 8 a.m. to do it. Uh, basically, I, I just signed Big Left to Force Five Records as an A&R. Force my records, and I, I, I'm an executive producer, and I'm producing some, uh, most of the album, you know. So, um, Big Left used to be the Coconostra, he's back, he's a fucking dope, he's a, a retired Marine. Uh, he uh, is gonna do a song with Scarhead, but I'm doing, but it's gonna, it's gonna be on his record. That makes sense, yeah. Um, how about wow, a lot of good questions here, man. Yeah. Um, oh, let me pick a good one. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot of, a lot. I gotta navigate this shit. Yeah. Um, hold on, let me see. Get Jamie to do ice pick again. You know what? It's, it's, good luck. It's, good luck. Yeah, right? Good luck with. Good luck with anything with that. I think. Yeah. I, I think Jamie. Jamie's one of my best friends. I did his show. Three times already, right? I did so, uh, yeah. but will Jamie ever do my podcast? I don't know. Yeah, like, 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 but I think that Jamie, he's that type of person who doesn't look back. Just you know what I'm saying. Like, he accomplishes and moves. Okay? So he and, and, and life, in order to really to make it in this business of entertainment, you have to learn from your mistakes and keep going straight. So don't go back because you fuck you, you fuck it up. That's what the whole big thing is. I go back and help my friends all the time, and that's why. That's why I, I live in a one bedroom apartment in Jersey City. All right. That's that, that's called Karma and God. <laughs> all right. And the New York Hawker Curse. Jamie has a dope house. Oh, well, that explains Jamie, Jamie, well, Jamie. That, well, that explains my studio apartment here in Manhattan. That's what, that's what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, but Jamie, <laughs> they're like, you want to be they, they're like, you want to be like these guys, or you want to be have them, you want to make it. And Jamie did, never looked back. And I think that he doesn't do ice pick. Because yeah. it reminds him of the time of his life that he, that he was like we were hanging out. He was all fucking crazy and fucked up. So I think I think he looks at me. He thinks it's crazy. He's like he loves me. He helped me out so much in my life, bro. But he, you know, it's like what else can he do? You know, he yeah, he helped me. Like you know, like it's like yo, fly, 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 be free. fly, fly, fly. Hey, here's one from our friend Brian. Is it true that Rowdy Roddy Piper once came to one of your shows? He's here right now. <laughs> well, no, no, Ronnie, Ronnie Piper, right? We did the, all right. So check this out. When we did the uh, uh, the, the Frank book, you know, for the Mike My Bone, the, the Frank, the Frank, the Frank 151 book, whatever, the, um, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, the, the yeah. DMS issue. When we did the DMS for the issue, for the party for the issue, they did. Hold one, on, I'm taking it out. Go ahead. Well, they did, they did one party. It was like, and yeah, they did one party in New York City, and it was like, like it was like you know, it was like a syndicated gal DJing. <laughs> like in Manitoba is in the basement. I did a party in L.A. and fucking Muggs DJ and fucking you know, all these famous DJs, and Roddy Piper came. Roddy Roddy Piper came, and he was this is uh, this is uh, a year before he died, so he came and he walked in. He had two ladies next to him. Two two ladies walked in. And he was like, he had like a trench coat on too. It was crazy in LA. And I was like, oh shit, Roddy Piper's at my party. I went, I went right up to him and we started talking, bro. That's so cool. It was so cool. And you know what? He was cool. I was like, yo, I love they live and all shit. You know, it was amazing. It was, I was talking to him like I, I was such a fan. And he was, and that's one of the things I remember. Like, it's very rare you bump into people who are famous and they're cool. You know, most of them are dicks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially, especially, especially out west, bro. 
Oh, LA so oh. Yo, it's here in New York. Yeah, you talk to him. You be like, hey, what's up? Yeah. See people, I see people on the, you know, but in LA, man, fuck yeah. that. Yo. It's, 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 I know a lot of actors. Oh, so Roddy Piper's from Winnipeg. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, know, right, cool. Right, he's from Canada. That's right. Cool. Yep. Oh, I, here, here's a good one. Um, how did the Transplants collaboration come about? Was this when you were signed to Travis Barker's label? No, Transplants, I did that song in 2001. And so I, I got signed to Travis Barker's thing in like 2004, right? Before. So I went, I was going out to uh, California with my, and I bumped into, I, I was going back and forth to California and I bumped, I, I met Esteban Oreo and a missed cartoon, but Esteban Oreo and I became best friends. And Don Caprio, my manager, we go back and forth because I went out there by myself one time. I, and Skinhead Rob was my boy, and he was he wasn't doing music or anything. He was just a, a, a my boy, and he was a fan of my music and stuff. And to, we, we, me and Skinhead Rob, Don Caprio, we talked. Esteban, then then Skinhead Rob started rapping, and he was like getting down with us. He was down with Soul Sass. I said I was I became good friends with Sick Jack and DJ Muggs, fucking uh. I'm still good friends with those guys. Esteban, I love him. My brother, uh, um, uh, Lefke, uh, OG Lefke, all the oldest guys, so assassins. Uh, they're, you know, then I, I met a whole bunch of people out there. So Risky, who's now DMS West Coast Arts, MSK Kids, so Triggs, rest in peace. I would go back and forth. So I went out there 2001 with, uh, with the, uh, 2001, the Thug Odyssey, a whole bunch of CDs. That I, I went out there, my the Scarhead demo, 2001, and I met those guys at, at a club. I gave it to them, and then I became friends with them. You know, it's so weird. From that, going there, 2001, getting my, my, my CD out, then they're like, oh, come over. Whatever. And I started hanging out with, I knew Lars, Tim from Ranson. And, and so Tim from Ranson was going to do the transplants. So Tim produced that record, you know what I mean? With, with, with Travis, but it's me and Tim. That's the first thing we did. I, I said, I'll, I'll rap on it. You know, it was the first rap song ever recorded. You know I mean, that's a, a, a dream. Drugs rule everything around me. And, and me who's, who's this in this photo with you? That's Don Caprio. Right. The, 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 another film person and manager. The poor guy. He had hair when when he when he met me. He had hair. And that's what happens when you manage me. Lost his hair, and that's it. That's it. Once you lose your hair, it's over. <laughs> Uh, Thomas Stark. Toby knows. <laughs> Tom, um, Thomas Starkey says, "Who came up with the idea for the mechanics team up with Necro? Love Necro with all the hardcore metal band name checks." You know what? Oh, fuck. Uh, we were we were all no, we, we all came up with the idea. Me, Prince Power Rule. And Necro, because Prince Metropolitan's Prince Power Rule from Queens, from Power Rule. Hey, um, Necro's brother's ill bill, right? Yes, 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 yes. So Necro, Necro, everyone knows that me and Necro are boys. Uh, it's crazy because we're like, we're boys and I love Necro. That guy's back no matter what. Those but guys you know, are Brooklyn guys. Yeah, yeah. But they, you know, they're bro bro Brooklyn Jews. You know, straight Brooklyn, up. Bro 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 I love you. Brooklyn Jews from, from yeah. Like Canarsie, you know what I mean? So they're, they're fucking, they're, you know, for the flatlands out there. But I'm yeah, saying, yeah. but me and Necro and Bill have a a, a, a bond. But me and Necro are best friends. You know what I mean? Like, I love Necro. And we have a bond because we're Jewish and we're fucking other street kids. But it's sometimes, you know, our views are crazy because they, they're like, he's in his own world. But he is a fucking musical genius. He's one of the dopest rappers, one of the dopest producers. I'm talking about he produces records and albums and beats and fucking plays bass. Yeah. Uh, Bill is one of the nicest. Bill is so nice. I mean, so, but the thing is, like, when we did that, we all were like, yo, because I, 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 I had this, the, 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 the beat, and I was like, I had the hook. And I say, like, it's killing time. I say all the things. So Necro goes, fuck that. Boom. Then Skinhead Rob jumped on it. Skinhead Rob's on that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, Prince Power Rule. So Skinhead Rob, Prince Power Rule, me, and Necro. And uh, I do the hook. And the hook, it's, it's off timing the hook, but it's, it's dope. But I wrote the hook first, and then we'll go from their stuff. So, but Necro kills it. He says the craziest shit metal, hip hop, hardcore, punk, all of those things. Bands. It's cool. Here's another one from Thomas. What was it like bringing Danny Boy from House of Pain to do a verse on Satanic Shamrocks? I mean, I mean, we, we, 
yeah. we met how we met those guys back in the early nineties, the, yeah. the yeah. right Danny boy and, and Eric. And then yeah. there was that whole mishmash in the early, you know, biohazard, sick yeah. of it all, house of pain, onyx, blah, 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 blah. I became, well, that, that's, that's, that's cool. Thomas got some good, good fucking, uh, question. So check it out. So back in the day, basically, uh, when I did, um, Danny boy was out of house of pain. Uh, I got him. We're doing a band. It's me and Danny boy became good friends. He actually, one time he was DMS. Uh, Danny boy, basically and I became friends. I got him back into music and we did uh, the shot blockers. Which yeah. Me, the first shot blocker stuff. First right? shot blockers, me, big yeah. left, Puerto Rican Mike slain and Danny boy. Puerto Rican yeah. Mike. What's up? Yeah. Puerto Rican. So we did a, we did a three, uh, three, two songs. Uh, two songs. It was a demo shot. Like, like uh, we did two or three songs together. Uh, that 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 lineup. Um, but when we did it, like Danny Boy wasn't talking to Everlast, but I was cool with Everlast. So my, me and Everlast were always cool. But Everlast is one of my boys. I, I'm one of the dopest rappers, but he's my boy. So so uh, I would be really middleman. They ain't talk whatever. Then um, then then we we started started doing everything together, and it was like. For a whole like a, like two years of uh, going back and forth doing music together and everything like that. Then uh, they for the shop blockers they they, they started doing uh, uh, me. Then Caves came in, me Caves hanging out with everyone. Caves good friend with Danny Boy and Everlast. And then uh, then they start they broke off and did their thing. And it was it was like shop blockers was pre was was before the Coca Nostra. It was shop blockers. Yeah. Got it. So, then, then, I was, uh, then we had uh, like whatever we broke broke ways, and Slane was doing. I said, Slane, do your shit, bro. Stay where you're making money. You know, Everlast jumped in that thing, and, and they became the Coca Nostra, and that shit was dope. You know, the first album is so amazing. You know what I mean, so of uh, the Coca Nostra, and I, I then they 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 were looking for a label, and I I, I was on Sub Noise, and I told the uh, singer for Sub Noise, yo, like they looking for a label. He said, you give Danny the number. I said, yo, they're looking for it. For, and gave him the number, and they got signed. Is there a, a, our boy Frankie Too Far is asking any shop locker stuff in the future? Yeah, that's what oh, they were. They were another one. It's tough to get everyone together, right? It, it, you know what? It's crazy. So, uh, Gr Grizz is part of the shop lockers too. Grizz got a, a G fellow is part of the shop lockers. Yeah, you know what? I want to do a, another shop lockers. I'm, I'm, I was talking about next year doing shop lockers mixtape and a KS13 mixtape. So it's cool. You know? That's exciting. You're going to Milwaukee tomorrow to, to, to play music. It's It's been so tough in this whole thing. I mean, we just did this. I mean, we just did this uh, live event from Bowery Electric with Stigma and, yeah. and the craze. Man, it felt good to to play some music, man. Yeah, it, it, you know what? It's, it's, I, I've been going back and forth recording and doing videos and stuff like that. Like you said, like yeah. the Cyclone video, like uh and I've been in the studio this whole pandemic. I've been working in the studio doing music. I, I, I don't stop, bro. I mean, it's like even uh, I this whole pandemic, I must have only worked fucking like, like four weeks of construction. You know what I mean? Think think about it. You know I mean? So now, now <laughs> out of six months, out of six months, four <laughs> only four weeks of construction because no one wanted to work in a fucking pandemic. You know what I mean? Like and, right. so, so I've been I've been doing my arts. I've been doing my canvases. You know what I mean? If you want a canvas, DM me. I got and also I got my merch. I got dannydiablomerch.com. Oh yeah, that yeah, people been asking about yeah. that. Yo, shout out shout out the merch. I love your merch, yeah. man. So my shout merch, out, yeah. shout I mean, out hard. Right. So my merch is Danny Diablo Merch.com. That's all it's Danny Diablo Merch.com. I got everything in, in, in there. So that's that's all my New York the New York hardcore streetwear that the 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 the, 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 the you know, just the, the my my logo. It's New York. It's called New York Hardcore Streetwear. It's the clothing line. Also, right now, if you want my hats, if you want the real hats, Hoya, come <laughs> All right. So, yo, if you want the if you want the New York Hardcore Streetwear hats, the original ones, you go to Generation Records and you go down <laughs> and you say, "Yo, Diablo sent me," and then we have, we have all colors and flavors, right? We, Yo, Gener Generation Records slings your shit, man. Mark, shout out to Mark, who's my yeah. my partner in crime. So Mark, <laughs> then listen, listen, listen. Oh, uh, oh, oh, it says you bet, you bet, <laughs> <laughs> nigga. You just listen. You just took my logo. You just took my logo. Flipped up upside down, nigga. I mean, <laughs> so stay out. So listen, I got. <laughs> <laughs> 
Go, go, go to if online. Go to Generation Records. Dot, I said that's proof. Uh, Generation <laughs> Records. Yeah, from from, from Mitz, Generation Records. Dot Big Cartel. Dot com. Got it. <laughs> no, he said sue me. Oh, shit, you saw. Oh, he's trying to sue. Ooh, oh, yeah. So go to Generation Records, get the hats. And we have pink, black and pink. We got for the girls. We got so many dope hats. Go there. And there's 14 colors. Hey, oh, why uh, am I had three? Three. He has like. Uh, our, our, our good <laughs> friend. <laughs> Uh, Hoya's got Hoya comes up with good shit too, man. Hoya's fucking Hoya's good. Hoya. You know what? Oh, hold on, yeah. Um, Lori Dawn, our our, our good friend, Hello, Hoya, Hoya. is shouting out your canvas. Are, are you doing any? Thank canvas? you. In, in between smoke and reefer, are you are you doing any canvases? Hey, that good for you. Like that? Nice. That's one. Hold on. That's one. Hold on. I'll show you two right now. That. Wow. Wow. That's graphite. Hold on. I just did four. Finished four. Uh, I got mail them out this week. Look at that one. How do how do people how do people get uh get uh, get your canvases? Is there a website for the canvases? No, yeah, I, I do listen. Oh, oh yeah, I do listen. How, do, how does how does let's say let's say someone wanted a, an Ezac original canvas? How does that happen? DM me on Instagram. Direct direct to the source, uncut, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. direct to the source. Nice. Yeah, DM me on Instagram. This, uh, this is one I'm doing. I just uh, finished for uh, Jay Reason. Wow, you're getting you're getting it down, man. It's good, good shit. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I went from my mother's like she can't believe that all the years of me fucking getting in trouble and fucking yelling at me is making me money, paying my rent. It's just paying my rent. It's it's it's, it's crazy. As an artist, as anything you do in life, you know, this pandemic, if you're not working and you don't find a way, you're, you're fucking retarded. You know what I mean? It's like, like if you're an artist, you got to create. You know what I mean? And you create something. Like you're doing your, your podcast. You're, yeah. you're, like you're, learning, you're, you're doing the, 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 you mean the Patreon and all that. You understand the people. You have an audience. And, and as an artist, you should be treated like an artist. Because in our scene... People don't like doing that. They they are seeing uh, the ones that oh underground this. We do it ourselves. Are the ones who say sell out the fastest. They're like oh look he's doing this. They're like oh, are you paying the bills? I, that's what I'm saying. When, well, when, you know, well, they, when I got signed by Travis Barker, they called, they were like Travis, he's a seller. Yeah, you, give me. He gave me forty thousand dollars. You gonna give me forty thousand dollars? No, right. You know what I say to people, man? When they start in with that bullshit, I say listen. You're a plumber. I don't ask you to come over here and fix my, you know, fix my freaking sink for free. You know, you're an electrician. Yeah, yeah. You get yeah. paid to be. I'm a filmmaker. Yeah. This is what I do. This yeah. is my trade. This is what I come from. A family of filmmakers. Yes. Why should my shit be free? Yeah. Why should my Why should my films be my Why should my stuff be free? I don't ask you to come here and, and work for free. This is what I do to survive. Yes. Yes, and then the, the people, people, it's, it, and I bug out on people. I'm like, yo, like, it's like, it's like, and we're still relevant in our scene. We're still doing stuff, and and then everyone's like, why don't you, why, why, why don't you do this and do that? Like, why, why can't you? Do that? How about who, there, there's people out there, with lots of money that don't do shit and don't give a fuck about the scene. You know what I mean, I don't say what's going on, bro. You know, it's, it's like if you love the scene, then do something for the scene. Then you know what I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's interesting, and, and now we're going deep, bro. Here we go. go. We're going deep now. So, and then you have these motherfuckers that go on about back in the day this and back in the day that, oh, and oh, yet they do God. nothing. They contribute nothing. Oh, no, they yeah, they're like, what happened to us? It's like, 
Yo, listen, I, I want to tell you straight up, man. There's a, there's a lot of people from our scene who are very, very talented and could have the could have had the world. You know what I mean like, like could have had the fucking world, man? Like, like I'm. I'm all right, I would tell you something. I, 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 I say it straight forward. If, if I say something's whack, then I'm like whack. I might make jokes about the thing, but my, I consider I'm a musician. But there's people in our scene who are dope, and and and, and they, they 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 just fucked it all up. You know what I mean? They just fucked it all up. I I I, did, I just saw the new video from the Chromax with, uh, with Harley Flanagan with the with the he was it's all instrumental and, and, and he did a movie and, and he did some kind of independent film and mm -hmm. the director did the thing and I I was blown away by about this video and this song. Wow! Like I was like wow! He just showed Harley Flanagan playing in the subway with a cello guy. And a, a cello, electric cello, and, a, and it, was, it was it was a new Chromax song, and wow. I was like, "Holy shit, bro!" And I was like, "That's how he's supposed to represent," but he can't even do that because he, but every, he's such a dick to everyone. You know what I mean? But I was like, "But he could have been that dude. He could have been a, any. This guy could play for any metal band when they Metallica needed a bass player. He could have been in there." But he, it's like it, it's like I don't I, I don't know. There's so much talent and everything. It's, it's like. Yo, just be happy, bro. Don't be, don't hold that, 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 that uh, old school. It was like this, that, blah, blah, blah. Everyone says that all the time. Uh, especially the old guys. You know what's funny? I always tell the old guys, Hoya, uh, me and Hoya talk about this. You old motherfuckers, the only reason that you guys liked DMS and everything and liked us because we would fuck you old niggas up. That was the only reason. <laughs> only reason why Rod, uh, uh, listen, because your music sucked. But <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm saying, no, because all the old guys hated us, and me and Hoya used to be like, yo, and they'd be like, blah blah. But then again, all the old guys back in old New York, New York, Hong Kong, all Nazis, and like, yeah, whatever they say. All, but what I'm saying, back then it was a different time. When we came, we beat the shit out of everyone, and that, and that's the only reason why they, they they liked us. You think they would like us, DMS, and we would beat the shit out of everyone? Well, listen. It was. It was. A, listen, and and I. I'm just saying straight, straight. Listen, from us point of view, the old guys like we better, might as well hang with them, be with them, fucking, you know, because they're gonna kill us too. So, but the saying, but the old old guys were like, "Fuck that, she's ruined." Blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. You haven't been in the show since 1987. Shut the fuck up. Exactly, and and, right. and I mean, and the internet has given has given people the platform. Oh, no. oh, it's not the same. You know, yeah. it's not like it was, you know, back in the day, we used to do that. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, God. Know, back in the day, fucking, like, 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 like we, we know how grimy the low east side used to be. Like, like these people, uh, now, a lot of these kids don't know that, but they love hearing the stories. They love uh, what the books that Roger did. You know I mean, stuff like that. It's cool. But I'm saying, like, Back in the day, the back in the day was a fucking hell. <laughs> it was hell, and you got and you guys, the older guys, the generation before me, they they found it, and I just, and they found it. And, but a lot of those guys left and never can look back. That's I mean, right. You, 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 Jimmy, Roger, still here. Stigma still here, hanging out. You guys never left. You guys been doing some stuff. And that's what still been torn. Everyone got props, and they were, and finally, the, not the front got props when they did the movie. And I'm fucking happy he showed the world that they were always there. You know I mean? Yeah, man. You, you know, uh, and, and I, I've, I've said this before, and uh, the way I see it and, and as a little bit of a, a, a music historian at this yeah. point is, listen, it was a double-edged sword. It's yeah. like, on one hand, you know, in the early 90s, you guys came out of the box and a lot of crazy shit went down. Yeah. And but on the other hand, on the on the other hand, you guys revitalized the New York hardcore scene, and you guys are still around. I, bands like Madball and Crown of Thorns. You know, you, if it wasn't for you guys, even though early on yeah. you guys were a little out of control, <laughs> and, and I can say that because I love you guys. You're a little out of control, but you know it left. It, eventually, it, it leveled off. And, and you guys have gone on to have really, you know, great proficient careers. And you yeah. guys kept New York hardcore alive in, in your own right. Hey, I, 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 I listen. I, I've been. I'm a. I'm a street kid from Queens. I uh, been in lots in like the graffiti scene, the street culture, fucking uh, hip hop shit. But 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 my my scene, my my love, my heart belongs to New York hardcore. That's right. No matter no matter what, see, people say. 
But, but I, people, I, the old guys just get mad at me for like, the, the punk rock. I'm like, no, New York Hardcore is not punk rock. It, it's from punk rock, but the best thing that ever happened to punk rock was a metal guitar player, the guy, the kid that could play the guy who shit from Sam Ash and got a, a, a nice fucking a little, a little, a little, a little distortion pedal and thing. And all of a sudden, wow, that's New York Hardcore. That's it. Hey, you know what? I, 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 Hoya just chimed in, and I got to oh. say, he, I think he's spot on. We destroyed a lot. But we rebuilt it better. Yes. I, I and also, how about this? My dad chiming in from down in Florida. I am glued to the screen watching Danny Diablo. Shanatoba. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Young Kipper. <laughs> Happy Young Kipper, Dad. There you go. Words of wisdom from Arnie Stone. You know? <laughs> That's great. You know I mean? Arnie Stone. <laughs> Arnie Stone, you know, my dad is a big fan of New York hardcore now. And yeah. and not so much the music, but the ethos. But but no, but but the but the ethos, the because my dad grew up in an orphanage in the Lower East Side. And like, you know, he found his way into the film business. He didn't know nothing. Yeah. He just, you know, he he, you know, he he went out and did it. And he sees that in, in New York hardcore and 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 he feels connected to it. Yeah, it, 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 it's my mom it says the same thing. Like it's like she is just it's it's also like Hoya, like like his his mom, his dad, his mom rest in peace. But uh, we our families were involved with it. I mean, all our friends. It was like it wasn't reg it wasn't reg uh, regular kids. It was, it was like kids who were who are really from different worlds, and it was like a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot we we escaped our reality. I mean, and we went to these CBGBs to get rid of. Whatever happened that week in high school and whatever at home, anything that's bothering us, we stay for a few hours on that Sunday to 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 just be in CBGBs and, and boom, and then also back to reality after we go home. You know what I mean? That those few hours every Sunday was meant the world to us. Here's he, exactly, and and here's our man Bernardo. Uh, all respect to you guys who started in the early '80s, Drew. Thank you, uh, but. But but no, he's right here. But but for certainly, it was this generation of Hoya, Madball, Crown of Thorns, and a lot of bands in the mid '90s to bring it internationally. Because like got, bands in my generation, when I came up in the early '80s, you know, when I got back to New York after being a part of the early Boston thing, coming back to New York, you know, uh, Murphy's Law, uh, you know, Urban Waste, Cause for Alarm. You know, uh, yeah. the mob, antidote. Uh, these bands, these bands, we didn't barely get out of New York, much less, yeah. you know, it was you guys in the early 90s that really went out there and brought it international. Yeah, I I, 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 I got to give it to, uh, it, 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 was, it was crazy because the, the bands that were going there were not in front and sick of it all before. And we were like, all right. Not supposed to go on. They, they would do. They were touring in Europe when it was fucking hell. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but Sick of It All was the first band from New York City that really was like going out there and making money and fucking showing the world New York Hardcore. Then Madball was like fucking. You know, ninety five was like. Madball, Madball went out and did work, yo. Madball, Madball. Listen, me and Hawaii talk shit with each other, but there's no one, no, no one tours like 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 Madball tours because they they, they it, it, it's a machine. You know what I mean? It's a machine, and it, it, it keeps going no matter what, and it will keep going no matter. That's the that's the thing people understand. It will keep going. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, that they, they they made it. You know, it made it. They that like that. They, that's their job. And and, and me, that's the same thing I try to do with, with my 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 music. But I, I do different stuff. But the thing is, like, that's my job. You know, you know I, when I'm up, when I'm up, fucking on every night, I go. The, this pandemic, I'm going to bed every fucking morning, six a.m., seven a.m. Because at nighttime, I'm doing all my social media. I'm doing the things with them. So, so when I see you posting shit, because I get I get up at six in the morning. Yes, so yeah, when, yeah. I, when I get up at six in the morning yes, and I, I talk to you, right and, I, and I see you walking yeah. the dog, I say to myself, "Is he getting up early like me, or is this fucking guy up from last night?" Yeah, all, <laughs> the, all, the, all the time. It's, it's like, yeah, it, this is the funny thing about life. Like, people, because who I am, and they think that I'm always crazy, but. I have not been, I haven't been so focused in my life for the last three years. You know what I mean? Like, like, I thank God for coffee. Uh, I'm not allowed to drink soda only on the weekend, uh, only on, on the weekends now. They took my soda privileges away, my girl. So, yeah. I'm like, why? Why? Because of, of sugar? The, tea, the sugar keeps me up. 
fucking uh so, I don't drink that shit either, man. You know, but I, I, I was drinking six liters a day for, for my whole life. It's too drink. much, man. That's so too much. Bad. I, I, if I'm going to party, if I'm going to party, party, it's only Friday nights I'm allowed to, to party now. It's crazy. Yep. But, hey, uh, uh, an, an, another thing, I mean, just we'll touch on this a real second. Another thing that 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 was uh, uh, played in heavy, uh, and Thomas says that about the music videos I did. Now, you know, not, not past the early ones that you see behind me, like Onyx Slam and Run DMC. Oh, videos, bro. What's up, bro? What- you know, we gotta do. We got listen. Yeah, you do this to me all the time. We gotta do a fucking video. Stop it! I'll fucking pay you the fucking money. Just fucking do the video. Don't hey, get run around yeah. anymore, bro. All right, get, listen. Get that no, fuck, get that Scarhead shit together and send me some fucking songs, man. Uh, yeah, you know? Listen, new Scarhead. But you're doing the video. I'll, I'm I'll, not scared, I'll, bro. I'll use Milwaukee, nigga. I'm not scared. Hey, listen. So I just want to say that after I did that initial run of videos with, with Paris May from the Chromags directing, I produced all those. When I went off on my own, I, when I when I went off on my own, yeah. man, I had to run doing all these video Madball, you know, Sub Zero, yeah. uh, you know, Rikers, uh, Fury of Five, Marauder, and those those no, the that, Marauder videos were dope. By that time. The, the, <laughs> Listen, I managed Marauder, and I'm I managed, I'm and I managed Fury of Five, bro. I'm still traumatized from that. Yo, Saab recipe. Yo, so, you know, Saab looks like Six Nine's father. What? Saab looks like he'd be Six Nine, the rapper's father. Saab <laughs> <laughs> oh. recipes. <laughs> yeah. See, look, everyone's excited. I'm doing the new Scarhead video. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Got him. <laughs> Sink and hook. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, that's 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 probably the first. That's one of the videos I did that blew up. Was the agnostic front video? Gotta go. Gotta, that, gotta, gotta go. That's a dope fucking. That's dude, a, that, that song is amazing, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, who's the guy interviewing him? That's good. You're coming on my show and asking me. You're coming on my show and asking me. <laughs> Who the fuck is the guy interviewing me? That's fucking wow. That's how famous listen, I am. Listen, what we do, listen, what we do in the shadows, stay in the fucking shadows. <laughs> oh my god, that Yo. is fucking funny. That 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 is great. That's fucking amazing. Go uh, let me see what 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 else we got. Um, God, that huh. wow. It, what else? Hold on. I'm looking. I'm, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Um, scrolling. Scrolling. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I smoke some. I love, I love weed, guys. <laughs> it helps me out. All right. Who's your favorite Pennsylvania hardcore band, and why is it Wisdom and Chains? What kind of question is that? You're I, asking a question and answering it at the same time. Who's I don't listen, your- listen. I don't listen, listen. I don't listen to hardcore outside of Five Barrels. Word. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to shout out, shout out to Wizard of Chains. They are they are the best Pennsylvania hardcore band. Well, here we go. Hi, uh, what we do in the shadows. Hype yourself up a little. I'm curious. Google it, motherfucker. Drew Stone. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on over here? Woo! Oh <laughs> God. Hey, Scam Dust, checking in. What's up, brother? Wait, 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 ask a question, Scam. Scam, no, he's, <laughs> scam, scam communicates in like clicks and beeps. Scam is, I want to say right now, Scam is, is, is working for the Trump administration. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Bro, you know Scam is voting for Trump. That nigga is out of his mind. Listen, I got to get Scam, I got to get Scam on the show. Oh, hey, hey. hey. Hey, do me a favor. Hang with me a second. Let me do a last shout out to the sponsors and we'll come back. We'll take some more questions and we'll wrap it up. Can, 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 can I do one, one thing? Yeah, go. I, I, had to, like, I had to do this right now because I promised someone. Um, Zach from Scarhead, Zach, he, uh, uh, he has a, 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 a label called Ruins Records and it's putting out all his stuff, like all like uh, Bulldoze, Agents of Man, um, Kane thought all his bands they played for and was in, and he's streaming all his old stuff. It's called Ruins Records. So it, it, just look out for Ruins, R-U-I-N-S Records. 
Like they, that's I can't see that, but so shout out to Zach and his record label. Peace. Okay, and, and Scam says he's got four tracks coming soon. Four tracks for what? <laughs> four tracks for who? <laughs> uh, Scam does records. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, all right. Uh, you'll be back in a minute. All right, here we go. Oh man, whoo! Hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, and New York Hardcore Comics. Hey, let's get something straight. Uh, lurking in the shadows, or, 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 or uh, what we do in the what we do in the shadows. I'm just busting your balls, man. Thank you so much for checking in and, and, and watching the show. And I appreciate everybody out there that has supported the show. Uh, I'm really blessed. This show has taken off. Uh, it's given me a platform. And thank you. So, you know, we get a little silly. We get a little silly uh, sometimes on the show. But uh, don't let's not get it screwed up. I appreciate your support. And I appreciate everybody from around the world who's made this show uh, w what it is. Um, is the shadows guy a Patreon? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so, but listen, shadows guy, I know what you're thinking. I've just checked in. I've just tuned in on this show for the first time and I'm loving it. I think this fucking host is great and he has great fucking guests. How can I be down? Well, there you go. There's the Patreon page. Go check it out. Uh, www.patreon.com slash Drew Stone. Please uh, support support the show so we can continue to do great, great stuff here. Um, also, for those that can't wrap their head around the Patreon, there is a PayPal page. It is Stone412. There's a PayPal address. Excuse me. It's Stone4124 at AOL.com. If you can, please make a donation uh, and support the show. Um also, uh, I mentioned it before, we got some merchandise happening, and uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. I see a few people checked in there. Uh, the merchandise, the merch, there it is. Uh, I'll post it again. I want to shout out a couple of my new patrons, Slimy Slim, Daniel Latouche, Mike Marino, David Schaefer, Greg, Gregory Ivany, Little Freeman, Felix, R.D.I. Ken, Ashley Wheatley Bradford, and David Hossinger. Thank you all so much for coming aboard and being a patron. Um, also, God, I'm glad I remember this. If you are watching the show on YouTube, and even if you're not watching the show on YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, where is that? Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you can. Um, it's not on the live broadcast. But if you're watching it on playback or any of my videos on Stone Fight, uh, says subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm a few hundred short of getting up to the next level there so I can um, integrate uh, a couple things with YouTube. I'm like a few. So please, please subscribe to the show. Also, yeah, listen, the merch, man, the New York Hardcore mug. How can we lose with the stuff that we use? Uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff on there. Um, what else? Uh, no, that, that's, that's kind of it. Um, let's see. Throw up that PayPal again, brah. There it is. Is that you, Gutter Christ? Is that Gutter? Is that your boy Gutter, Danny? Um, that's it right there. Uh, where's the PayPal? PayPal's, uh, scrolling on the bottom. No, wait, I'm sorry. It's not. Here we go with the uh, with the PayPal, 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 PayPal. Where are you? Uh, boom! There's 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 the PayPal. Uh, that said, um, let's see. Love the show. Love the guests too. Great to see him here. Love from, from Binghamton, New York, upstate New York. Represent a a absolutely. Um, uh, Little Freeman. Hey, yeah, thanks for your support, Little Freeman. I, I see your stuff on Instagram, too. It's all good, Drew. Some real New York hardcore aficionado shit going on here. We all get to meet our hardcore heroes through you. Hydrate, good vibes. Good advice there, man. Um, every time I hear his laughter, I'm reminding him about Rick to Life on the New York hardcore documentary. 
you know what? We're gonna we're not gonna get into Rick to Life on this show. Honestly, uh, I think it's common knowledge that Rick to Life uh, is ill, that he has mental problems, and like I'm not of the ilk of like making fun and carrying on about people that have mental problems. I think it's common knowledge that Rick to Life is sick. Um, what else we got? Um, hardcore is supposed to be serious. God damn it. Well, there you go. <clears throat> Uh, let me bring on our guest uh, of the day, international superstar Danny Diablo, who is getting on a plane in a couple hours and going to the lovely state of Milwaukee to work on the new Scarhead album, right? Lovely state of Wisconsin. <laughs> Milwaukee's the city. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. I'm I sorry. Can't. I'm I sorry. Can't. The lovely city. Right. I'm sorry. My well, it's been crazy because uh, I, the, I'm, I'm going out there and recording, and, and I'm just, oh, you know, it's four days of recording. So you don't, I'm not gonna do all vocals in those four days. Like it's, it's gonna be crazy. Five, five songs. to me, it's gonna right. be a little pushing. So I'm just going out there. But we, we haven't, we don't even have the songs yet. Oh come on! No, it's going never. We never have that. We go I do everything in the studio. Oh my god! That's why. That's why. Look, look at this. Look at, look, at, look, at, look at all of, all of this. Is what, yeah, so we have. I have. I, I've been writing songs. Zach and Jimmy have been writing songs, and um, I've been writing songs with uh, Stefan from Death Star Inferno. So well, you better you better fucking bring some lyrics, bro. Listen, listen. Crown Thorns knows the real lyrics. Scarhead, Scarhead, and I'm in the, I'm in the studio. Like, well, hey, well, you got my rhymes are pussy. <laughs> Hey, shouting out, got to shout out Michael Gibbons, formerly of Leeway, a patron of mine. Hey, Michael, you got to come up my way. Let's do 10 questions, man. I hope you're well, buddy. Michael Gibbons, one of the fucking best fucking guitar players in New York hardcore history. That motherfucker could thread. Yo, know, that motherfucker is like Steve Ingray Brownstein. Hey, you're a Queens motherfucker. You loved Leeway growing up, right? Listen, I used to... I used to, I, I, I used to um, I just take the, the Q11 by Hoffman Park, and I remember one time I saw Michael Gibbons walking right by Wood, right by Hoffman Park. I don't forget who he, who he was with. I think he might be with AJ, but I saw Michael Gibbons walking at, by right by the bus station right there, but, but, but right by the Queens Mall. They're walking underneath the train, and the thing oh, came out. I was like, "Oh shit, that's Michael Gibbons and AJ Novello." I mean, when I was a kid, you know, so it's kind of Queens. Oh, Queens, he's he's real Queens. Yeah. Hey, uh, here's a question from our boy. Brooklyn Boy Productions, ask E, Big Daddy Kane or Rakim? Damn. <laughs> That's fucked up. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be, I'm going to tell you something right now. Like You, I, were, you, were, you answer it first because I want to answer that one. I want to answer I, that I would, one. I would, I, would, I would say something right now. Like, Big Daddy Kane is one of the illest. I'm talking about one of the illest, illest you can dance, move back, smooth motherfucker. Rakim is one of my favorites because Rakim and, and, and Rakim, like, was, was, I saw Rakim uh, perform like two years ago. Me and uh, me and fucking Vinny Ali went to go see him. Uh, what the, the place in fucking Jersey, the, the old place, the Stone something, but the, the Stone Pony. No, that's Stone Pony. It's, it's Wait, some, where is it? Where is it? It's, uh, where, where Tim used to do so, shows. I played it all the time. It was a. Uh, it's, it's oh, like oh, old, oh, the blue in Secaucus. That joint. No, 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 not that one. But the other ones, it's, it's like an hour away. Oh, it's, the one, uh, the Stanhope House? Stanhope House. Yo, I saw Rakim play there, and it was only a hundred people. What? Yo. They, yeah, it was, it was weird. And then This is before he got back together, Eric B. So uh, and, and me and Rakim were talking. Vinny Ali, you, so we're in the back, told me and Rakim are talking. We're like, oh, shit. He's like, yo, what's up? And we hug each other. And we're talking. I was like, yo, blah, do music, blah, blah. He goes, yeah, no, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, Vinny Ali goes from, he goes, uh, excuse me, he goes, Blah 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 blah, and he goes, he, he says, he, he, so Rakim goes, my sister, blah blah. He goes, goes Vinny Ali lives across the street from Rakim's sister, and 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 they used to babysit Rakim's uh, niece. It was just, it was crazy. So it was it was cool. We all hang out talking about Long Island Queens. It was cool. It was like it, that's how cool it is. You know what I mean? You know, Rakim, Rakim's the best MC in the world. I worked with both of them back in the day. I uh, when I was this when I was stage manager at 3G Stage, B 
Big yeah. Daddy came, came. Big Daddy Kane came in, and they they did um, what's the one? I do work. I, I get the work. job done. I get the work done. Yeah, yeah, right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do work. Right. So I, I was the stage manager at 3G Stage when they came in and did that. Yeah. So um, that you know, and he had the two dancers. Yeah, Scoob, yeah, yeah. Scoob and Scrap. Yeah, Scoob. One died. One died. Scoob died. Right. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then. I was the second AD on the Eric B and Rakim videos, two of them, Follow the Leader and Michael oh, Flav. Remember for Flav? Flav's dancing in the park. Flav with Flav. Listen, I, I, I worked with them back in the day, and to me, the bo both of them both are amazing. Great. Both are amazing. But, you know, but you know what? It, it's not fair to – it's not, you know, um, you know, Kane – Brought a lot to the party, man. His flow and 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 what and, and personality wise, personality, right? He was like more like, man. Yo, yeah. they look to the day to this day, you know. Yeah, yeah. Pig Daddy came was important. Yeah, he he wasn't. Yep, Ab absolute, uh, absolutely. Um, favorite cool Keith album. Now we're getting into some shit here, you know. <laughs> That's right. A blue. What's it? One blue something. <laughs> I love your cool Keith is dope. I I, I, I yo. Know, Sets of silence, dope. I love, you know, like it's yeah. like cool. Keep cool, you hear a fucking cool. Keep story, yo. I got the ill story. So this is fucked up. So I'm uh, Scarhead was, was um was fuck. Scarhead was pl playing a show somewhere. We I forgot where it was. Uh, uh, maybe it was uh, the Warp Tour. We played a thing, and we came down there, and uh, cool. Keep was playing. So. Me and Porig and Mike are walking, and all of a sudden, Cool Keep's like, someone introduced me to Cool Keep. This is Danny Diablo. What's up, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Lord, he's like, what are you doing? And all of a sudden, my, I go, this is my other thing, Porig and Mike. And he, and he looks at him. They look at each other. They, they, the head's like, what? what? And he goes, he goes, <laughs> he goes, Metal Mike? And I was like, what the fuck? Wait, what's going on here, Metal Mike? He goes, Metal Mike with the bike, with the motorcycle, Metal Mike. And he's like, it's Keith. And he goes, oh, shit, Keith. And they hug each other. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. And Mike, <laughs> fucking, Mike's, high, Mike's high as fuck. He's got coked up. And he's like, oh, shit. And I was, I was like, wait a second. You know Cool Keith? He goes, that's Keith from my neighborhood. Oh, and wow. Like, you know that's Keith. Cool Keith was set the side against it. That's Cool Keith. The whole, your whole fucking life in the Bronx. You know this guy in your block. And you don't know he's Cool Keith. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know that he's with the six of the star. I mean, it's, it was, oh. it was two worlds. So Bronx. These guys grew up together since they're like 10 years old. Dr. Octagon. The, the big one of the biggest underground rappers in the world on his block. He, 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 he calls him Metal Mike. <laughs> Before your mic had a mo a, a motorcycle in like in like nineteen nineteen eighty eight eighty nine. That's funny, man. <laughs> That's funny. It's funny, bro. Hey, here's here's one for you, man. Me and Eric B and Rakim on the set of Follow the Leader. What? Oh shit, yo! And yo, and, and, and the crazy shit was Eric B is from like from up uh, from my neighborhood, uh, 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 Elmhurst, East Elmhurst. You know, it's yeah. Jack Knights. It goes to the Story Boulevard. He's from there. So when I was a kid, I used to see that motherfucker driving his car up and down 31st Avenue and Northern Boulevard. And he's a big motherfucker. He's big. Eric B's big. He's like a big I, saw, I just saw him. A, I, I think, yo, Cousin Joe checking in. I don't know if Cuz was with. I think Cuz was. It's so, talk about synchronicity. I think Cuz was with me. We went to the boxing match at the Barclay Center. Yeah. And afterwards, we went to um, we we were we were there for the um, a press conference because we 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 had a we got a little juice and uh, we were there and, and somebody pointed out, yo, that's Eric B. Eric B. is a big boxing guy. He was at the press conference. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and and I walked up to him. I walked up to him after, and I was like, yo, I worked on follow the leader of microphone feed, and he was like, wow, that's dope. That's real dope, yeah. Uh, yeah he's, a, he's a big boy. He's not that. He, he seems to. He, he's. I think he. Yo, speaking of Milwaukee, check out Eric B's jersey. Rocking the Brewers. <laughs> rocking rock the Milwaukee Blue, Brewers there. Oh, yep. 
All right. So there you go. What's shout up, Carl? Cousin, shout, shout out to Cousin Joe for Yo. fucking help, you know, for doing so much for the New York hardcore scene. And uh, it's, it's always good to see that people are bringing that energy and positive energy into what they do. You know what I mean? You know, say people, it's like everybody else. Like, like everyone can say all the stuff about this guy was this and this. It's like, like now it's, it's like how fucking uh, mo mobsters uh, do corporations and do good for to community like that. I guess you know I mean it's like stuff like that. Say so, hey, you know what? We're, we're gonna clean up the whole building. You know what I mean now we clean up the whole neighborhood. You know? Hey, I miss you, cuz, and you gotta come on the show. Um, yes, yeah. Oh, it was Mikey Queens. Okay, it was. It was, we went to the big, the champion. Right here, Mikey, right here. No, no, it, was, it was me, Cuz, Mikey Queen. Who, who, was the, who was the fourth person that was with us, Cuz? It was, I think there was one other person. Anyway, it was Mikey okay. Queens that noticed that Eric B, Eric B um, was, was at the fight. He's a big, big boxing fan uh, down, yeah. in, down in Atlantic City. Oh, Petey. It was Petey. Oh, Petey, right? go, Petey was with us. Petey was with go, us. Go, go, go. And, uh, yeah, so so there you go. But uh, but yeah, that that that's that's that. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> that, that that's the name of that tune. Um, here's another one. Look, I you know I like I, I hate to not put. I got to do all my pictures. Here here's one of you giving it the rip here. Um, that's correct. Cool. That's the same virus, right? Is it or is it? Um, it's the other one, Brooklyn Bazaar. Is it? Could be. I don't know. <laughs> Listen. I look good, bro. I look good. Yeah, listen. You got the you got the dollars make sense, you know. Yeah. And hey, listen. Every hey, cuz you hear this? A show with cuz would be great. Get cuz on, no doubt. I'm gonna call you later, cuz. We gotta set some. We gotta set something up. We gotta we gotta make it happen. Um, Cleveland loves Danny. What do you, you got? You got people in Cleveland, bro? I, I lived in Cleveland for a little while. What? Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, for like a year or two. Wow. Boy, you love those 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 Midwest cities, huh? You know what? The, the Midwest always show man love to Scarhead. You know what I mean? So that's cool. You know? Listen, you go you go where the people love you, right? <laughs> here's, here's one of my favorite pictures right here, man. You yeah. Know? This is at the premiere of the New York Hardcore Chronicles film, and I appreciate you being in that film. Uh, Thank it's, you so much. You know, it was I great. Like, I look like a Puerto Rican Spike Lee. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I was good. <laughs> yeah, do, you good. Live, do you live in harlem who, you know, who? don't say you? where you live but no, i can't you. is it oh, you? you do i live in harlem uh close but no I, i'm not technically no i'm not in harlem no <laughs> But listen, I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I'm a white guy. I must live in Harlem, right? Because because there's really no, there's barely any black people in Harlem these days. So, but no, I'm I'm in the upper I'm in the Upper West Side. I'm in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. So <laughs> everybody's uh, everybody's asking what you're smoking. Weed. <laughs> OG Kush. Oh man, hold on. Oh man. Uh, hey, let's um let me see. We're gonna wind it. Let me see. Uh ask him if the front cover to the Crown of Thorns album Trinyar Blues was taken in the Bronx. Yeah, of course, uh Taken in the Bronx by Nick One in the 80s. Is that right? Yeah, it's a yeah, that's that's smart. When you drive on when you're on the highway, you can see it. You mean right there, you know where it is. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Tell me and, about it. Everyone, I got something to tell. I got a confession, everyone. Okay. Oh, hold on. I got okay. a confession to one. Whoa, whoa. My son, do you have anything to confess? Yes, I have, I have, I have a confession. I'm, 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 you know, I always talk Queens, Jackson Heights, you know, Woodhaven, blah, blah, blah. But uh, my mother is from Spanish Harlem, from East River Houses in uh, Spanish Harlem, and um, where Case Lay's from over there. And, uh, she worked at Flower Fifth Avenue. That's a hospital that used to be. Mackie was born there. And so was Maddie Boy was you know, born there also. Um, it's no more back in the day. My mother worked downstairs in the switchboard. That's how old it is. That's how old I am. She worked in the switchboard thing. And so I was born 
in Harlem. I was born in Harlem, in Manhattan, and then for the first three of my lives, my life, I was raised in Southview Projects in the Bronx, right by White Castle. So I, I'm really from the Bronx, guys. I'm born in Harlem, uptown, wow. uptown, uptown, <laughs> uptown, baby, uptown, baby. But Queens all day, nigga. Ah! Lou DiBella just sent me a picture. Lou, Lou DiBella, why don't? Why would you text me shit in the middle? You see, you're watching the show. He can't see. His nose is in the way. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me download this picture, man. Lou DiBella's nose is on the, in the way. So I'm saying it's not his fault. Jesus, man. <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to get this picture to myself here. Let, let me let me see uh, see what I have here. Um, Mount Morris Park represent, huh? Morris Park. That's that's uh, Frankie Too Far said that. Hold on, I gotta see what Lou did. Yo, Lou, yo, Lou DiBella, whatever whatever you just sent me, Lou, it better be fucking good because I'm taking the time during the show to send it to yeah. myself, download it, and the whole shit. So <laughs> here we go. Wow. Where is it? All right, I'll ask you. I'll ask you another question, and then and then I'll, I'll dig up the photo. The nose always knows, cousin Joe says. <laughs> uh, Joe's Joe's nose is very uh very very strong. <laughs> anyway, uh, any, moving right along. Uh, Bronx no, no. Nose. Ch Chucky D's uh, Danny. What's Scar up, Scar Scarface or Carlito's way? Uh, this is the fucked up thing. Scar but Carlito's way is good until the whack ending. That was the wackest ending. And cousin Joe looks like the the mobster's son that the, the, that's in the cop uniform that kills him at the end. He's all mad all the time trying to kill him. That looks like cousin Joe that plays the cop. The, the mobster <laughs> plays the cop. Yeah, but uh, Scarface definitely. All right, hold on. I got the photo. <laughs> all right, here we go. Was it worth it? You you let me know. Was it worth all the hassle? Here's the photo from Lou DiBella, which of course, of course, is not even a scanned photo. It's a picture of a picture, right? What? Fucking guy. You know what, Lou DiBella? You know what, Lou DiBella? How does this sound? We're gonna start a go freaking <laughs> scanner. Because if I see one more of your photos on the internet, which is a picture of a picture, I'm gonna come and burn your freaking house down, bro. Yeah. Anyway. Come on, it's fucking 2021. Here we go. There it is, right there. Boom. Who's what's going on here? Holy shit. That, that's, right, the tour. that's the that, that's the that's the the skill. Oh my god, look at one there. Let me get all the stuff out of here and I'll blow it up. Hold on, hold on. This is Scarlet. This is the, the, uh, Lou, is this the Scarlet Mabel tour? Or is this what is this? There you go. Oh my god. Who's it? Who, well, I see Sam Dust's face. Look. <laughs> This is why Scam Dust wears sunglasses. Look how close his eyes are together. <laughs> it's almost like Cyclops. From okay, I see. I see Goat. I see Goat Lou. Yeah. I see Scam. I see Scam's brother up top. Yeah, yeah. Right? This, this is Scam's this brother. Scarhead. This is definitely Scarhead. Wow. Oh, Scarhead Haybreed. Where do you see Jamie? I don't see Jamie. I bowl the recipes all the way on top. Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Just bowl the, right? Just bowl the recipes. Oh, man. Oh, good one. All right, Lou. I'll cut you some slack on this one, Lou. Yeah, that's a, yo, Lou, listen. Lou DiBella is one, another person in, in the hardcore scene, as a, a, a vocalist, uh, is one of he, what he did with Sub-Zero and he, the way he branded it and everything was so dope. Lou is also a dope rapper, man. I told you, Lou, yes. When you did, when you son of the 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 son of I remember I, I did a lot of dirty stuff in Florida back then. Wow. I remember, I remember pissing on a scorpion over there. And then he says, Travis, Travis blacked out in top corner. Yeah, I remember right. the last time I saw that guy, I beat that guy half to death. So let's, let's not talk about him. So, so it's good It's good that we blacked him out of the photo. I blacked him out. I blacked him out with Mike Cornetta and Kevin Red. <laughs> Rest in peace, both of them. <laughs> oh, God. Um, 
Guy stunk. <laughs> Literally? That was the guy who robbed the money for the, the tour. We came home. We robbed the money. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's the guy that uh, I can say this now. Both guys, both of my my people are uh, both both of the people who helped me out of this are dead. So, so basically, we 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 held them for like three hours and we, you know, talked to them and stuff. Well, hey, listen, <laughs> that's, that's what I love about you guys. You're I, I great. Think, I think, you know, listen. Yo, You're great negotiators. You're look, great talkers. Yo, I you, listen, listen, listen. I, I was like this. You stole twenty five hundred dollars from us. So, but that then you get five thousand dollars. Let me ask you some. Who the fuck in their right mind would steal money from and, Scarhead? And, and listen, and, and he was a straight edge kid. EBR gave us gave it. We didn't know the guy. EBR, the label with the fucking bus, gave us the fucking guy to sell the merch. Oh. So he stole all the merch money. Yo. And I found out he was a straight edge degenerate gambler. Wow. So I didn't know, I didn't know well, such a no, 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 listen, I'm gonna tell you some story. I'll tell a story right now because I can say it. Yo, I fucking basically, you know, we we we, we did me, my cornetta, I had I brought my corner and Kevin Red, rest in peace, both of them Queens uh -huh. right there. I love my corner, I love you, Kevin Red, I love you. But they these guys were goons, you know what I mean? So uh -huh. you know, we held them and 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 I, I just stood there and I'd be like, all right. What happened? He after the, after a few karate kicks and a uh, a scissor to the top of your roof of your mouth and stabbing him the top of your mouth. He told us everything he did and and, and you know and we, 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 we tuned him up. He got at least uh, four thousand dollars worth of damages and fucking hospital bills. So we, uh, it's good, even even. Hey, listen, if I had a death wish, probably the first thing I would do would be to steal money from Madball or Scarhead. You know, and it was it was just crazy. Like we like we were young and stuff, and and you know people always tell us we do the, the I did the right thing. I took oh, the, scam I, says he's scam says he said he did it. This guy said that scam did it. Oh, scam stole it. Probably did. No, 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 no. The guy you're talking about said scam did it. What? Is that For real? I uh, did, did he? I don't know. But yo, know, maybe maybe he did. Maybe he did. I, I, I would definitely. Maybe. Maybe that was the first thing he said when you confronted him. He said, I didn't do it. Scam did it. You know what? They, it's his no, name fucking Scam. You, usually it would be Scam. But, say, but he would never steal from me. But if it was something else, he definitely would do it. Scam would never steal from a brother. He, no. He, scam is one of the most respectful guys ever. ever like, when it comes to stuff like that. Okay? Tried to blame Scam. Well, he caught a beating. <laughs> oh, my God. It's horrible. Lou DiBella says the guy from America's Most Wanted was chilling at our hotel. Never said one word. Hours later, cops swarmed. Yeah, remember, down, yes. And we all hid in the swimming pool. Yeah, I remember that. They came in, they got him. They got him, yeah. Oh. That was a great tour. <laughs> you know what I you know what I love about these tours is that that uh, Earth Crisis is in the mix. Yeah. And and like I just had Carl on the show and he was really great. It was one of my it was one of my my favorite shows I've done. And I love how Earth Crisis and Madball and Scarhead. I love that, bro. Yeah, you know what's even crazier? Uh, when we do tours, we always play Florida. Florida's always good. The last time well, I did a tour, it was like Murphy's Law in '96. We did a tour Murphy's Law and Scar uh, Scarhead. Uh, Murphy's Law, Scarhead, and uh, I forgot who else. Murphy's Law, Scarhead, and uh, one more band. But the thing was, this was crazy. Bro. You know, Vietnam plays some shows, so but um, when we uh, H two O, so we went wow. to we we stood we stood in Mike Scorsese's for Vietnam's house, which I grew yeah, up. I, yeah, I remember, I remember Mike. So sure. we, stood, we stood in Scorsese's house, and yeah, yeah. and his cousin was there. This is this nineteen ninety six. His cousin Kevin Antonucci was there from from uh, from Woodhaven, one of the illest it was things down with him. I'm talking about back in the day from like from right. F Haven over there with, with the Gotties and all that. They, he had, he, he, they, he got caught for, he was in young guns, all the mob kids robbing the mob spots. So they uh -huh. were robbing from their dad's spots, the, like the, 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 the car games, and everything. They got caught. He caught mm -hmm. a body, whatever. Yo, they got Antonucci, whatever. He's right in the neighborhood. A year ago, I'm, uh, I was with Scorsese last, I was in Florida a year ago playing. And all of a sudden, so he goes, get on the phone. I said, who? I said, yo, he's like, it's Kevin. He's like, yo, what's up, Danny? Yo, I was like, nigger, the last time I saw you was the day before the feds went raiding the house and we were on tour. 
And he just got out of jail. He did 25 years. How crazy is that? Now, Mike Scorsese is related to, to Martin Scorsese, his, his, uh, his uh, nephew. Yeah, they have the same grandmother. They have the same grandmother. They all, uh, it's right. so, but yeah, they're, all, they're related. So Scorsese's cousins were Antonucci from the neighborhood, from Woodhaven. So I was like, so some Guido shit. You know what I'm saying? But, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Antonucci's out of jail. God bless him, his family. God bless Scorsese. God bless Nam and Vietnam and all the guys from L from Florida, Florida, all, all the guys, the Gus, all the Richie, I love you. I like it's it's I got so much love traveling that with all these brothers, all the people I know, and I get Cleveland, everywhere, fucking LA, uh, up uh, uh, upstate, uh, all over Boston, Philly, Chicago, all the fans from all over the world. It's fuck it's the United States is where I live, but all over the fucking world. I have a career because of these people because they go to see, listen to my music, and see my videos. Thank you so much, man. You know what I mean? I I got a new home, Force Five Records, that to play music out, and I, I can't. I'm so happy. I'm you know people can be miserable. I'm happy. I'm happy. There's not. I'm happy to be alive. Everything's going good for me. In a few years, I know that that. Everything else is gonna be good for me. Like my, 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 my situation with my son, I know he's gonna be, be one to, uh, to to be in my life. So I'm happy. It's all working out, and you know, and, and 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 I'm I'm just gonna say that I'm happy for you, Drew, because you're doing this 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 the show, and I'm happy that you're you're doing your relevant. You mean but a lot of people do do all this talking they aren't relevant, and they, they they get upset instead of getting upset. And behaving, see what you can do. Talk to us and be like, hey, "How can you involve?" Whatever. You know, me and you are nice guys. We, we'll help someone out, man. You mean? But but don't go behind on message boards and fucking this and that and be like, "Oh, this sucks." Like all the stuff. Like you know, people say shit. On, the worst thing they can do. I, I I would be lying to you if I didn't get upset when I look at YouTube things. And, and no matter what you do, they'd be like, um, it'd be crowned thorns. They'd be like, oh, great band. But then someone would be like, well, but they're violent. And it's always someone to say something. So it's like this thing. Like, no matter what you do, you do something to describe, oh, this is that DML, you got the punks. But no one would say that to me. You know, it's like, it's it's like, it's like, it's like, grow the fuck up. You know, you know, you know I, I, I learn, I, I live by something nowadays and, uh, it, it's sort of a it's sort of a modification on something that I saw that um, uh, what's his name um, uh, what's the artist uh, what's the artist's name Andy Warhol yeah. and and it's sort of a variation on that and 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 and, and I and I paraphrase here but I live my life I live by my life by this ethos now and he says go out and make great art and while people are arguing and criticizing about that art. Go out and make more great art. That's that's dope. You know what I mean? Like I make shit. By the time people are sitting there fucking crying about it or whatever, I'm Do making I'm, I'm yeah. making I'm making more great art. You're, like you're, you're create. Don't destroy. Create. When people go like, what is it you don't like about what I do? What you don't like one of you don't like one of my five movies. You don't like one of my bands. You don't like what? What is it? You know what? Take a number, get it the fuck at the back of the line. Who gives a shit? It's, it's so insane sometimes. It's like you know, you do your thing and do it the best the best way possibly you can do it. So just so you show the world this is a reflection of, of, of me. I mean, and I'm trying to press. Sometimes, sometimes uh, you know, guys do. Uh, Sometimes when you get some, you do music and people like bug out. You're like, why didn't I understand? Why can't I get it? But then ten years later, they get it. You know I mean like it's like yeah. when you you a band that you love does a second album. And you're like, wow, it just sucks. And like, ten years later, you, you fucking love it. You're like, that's, oh my god, but you weren't ready. You know that that's that's like uh, the great minor threat line. There you go, right there. Hey, let's let's bring on uh, Stephen Messina. Who's uh, what's, what's going on, bro? What's up? What, what are you guys doing? Are you driving that train? Are you high on cocaine? Better uh, <laughs> <laughs> watch my speed. Yeah. I, I got to I I say, you know what? I, I have to say that, especially given the, the week we're all having, if we could bottle Danny's energy, <laughs> if we could bottle that, there would never be a blackout or a power outage again. It, it could you're, power. It could power that. It could power that train. It's you're. What, it's, what train are you in? That you're in the conductor's car. 
Uh, this is an M7. This is uh, this is the you know the, the current model. Although we now we have an M9, which is really cool. Right. But uh, I like to be in the conductor's car so I can take my mask off and not have to mix oh, with the savages, you know. And but but got anything? You got anything for Isaac? I do. I, I just <laughs> I just you know what? Uh, it's just such positive energy and and. The, the most fun you can't watch you uh, whenever you. you're on you can't not Thank laugh you, you can't even when Thank like, you. It, it's just so needed you know and <laughs> and you could tell like everybody and what what better timing after after yesterday after the debates and all that oh that was fun yo we didn't talk about the debates how, oh god no how crazy was that how, you know what yo, yo, listen, that, yo listen People all over the world saw that. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> That's like what we theme. need for no, 2020 man. is Diablo and Stigma. Oh, God. That's what we need. That's, that's the card right there. You know, that, that, that debate will be like Stigma and, and Scam Dust. <laughs> you know, that, we gotta do that oh, together. man. It's fun. Yo, this show is going on really long, and people like saying, I can't stop watching. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I can't stop watching. Hey, can we can we yeah. get Godzilla to make an appearance? Uh, yeah, where's Godzilla? Come God, on. Godzilla's sleeping out of the room. He's like the poor uh, guy needs some sleep. You know, he's like he's always running around. That, that dog is one of the best ever. Fuck you, yeah, everyone. Fuck politics. I hate politics, guys. Exactly. Listen, uh, guys, I hate politics. And we were talking about this, but the, the world it just got crazy. It's like back in the day, it's like it's like it's just these young kids don't understand what uh, I told you. I, I spoke about the other day. If something bad going to happen, we have to go to war. And the, look, these young kids understand when their friends come back, when they come back missing arms and legs and people die, and that's about perk and pride and being yeah. like, yo, I'm, I'm proud. I've been around this world three or four times, bro, the United States, the, the world. And I'll tell you right now, there's no country better than the United States. Right. I'm not pro this look like I'm I'm proud to be poor again Jewish. I'm you know I'm, I'm proud fucking be for Queens. I'm proud to be American. I mean yo you go you go to, have you little bit little bitches go to this country and yeah had to had to uh fucking uh, sit in the hole you guys will cry especially the girls oh my god disgusting bugs you mean you know, how this is the only country that a, a white fucking bitch can go up to a fucking black cop and be like, you, 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 you stupid cop, and I get punched in the face. Do that in Brazil. You get your head, you get shot in the fucking face. Do that. At, be a woman, speak up in a fucking Muslim country and see what happens to you. They just killed a guy, and they you know what the people in the United States, we're gonna write a petition. They were like, fuck your petition, they would kill him tomorrow. But you know why? It's not our country. Mind your fucking business. <laughs> I ain't say yo. It's, it's like yo, stop the fucking bullshit. And the people defund the cops and all that. If you defund the cops, you know what happens? Fucking people come in your house and fucking rape your mother and kill your fucking your kids. And, and most of your people aren't built for that. You know what I mean? So you gotta bear arms, right? So that's, and that's, like, the, most, that's the most politics we've ever talked on this show. I will tell you, I'm, 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 I believe in things, but I believe in uh, guns and stuff. You no know, bearing arms. You know why? They're like, yeah, but people die. All right. In the mid, the medieval times, everyone died. There's no <laughs> oh gun. my god! And they, they were, you got killed by swords <laughs> and arrows. And before that, the fucking cro retarded cro magnum man that came and beat you to death with a club. So it, it keeps on going no matter what. So I will. You take away my gun, I will kill you. With this fucking iPhone. I will beat your fucking face with this iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> but shut the fuck up, you little pricks. Uh. All right, that's all, all right. Good. Okay, that was good. Listen, all don't right. hurt children, don't hurt women, you know, and, and 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 be good. If you if 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 you if Jesus has helped you from that suck for not sucking dick for crack and killing people and being good and doing fucked up things, then Jesus is good. All right? Doesn't matter, right? You can suck dick all you want, but if you're a crackhead and robbing I mean, and doing fucked up shit, stealing your mom's TV, yo, then then, then Jesus helped you. Then, then you know what? God bless Jesus. When you're older, you understand this. Oh, when you have a fucking crackhead best friend or fucking family member, you understand this shit. You mean so? But for right now, you 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 listen to fucking youth of today. You don't understand what's going on. You're young. 
But you know, excuse me, excuse me. I have to cancel my plans for tonight so we can continue for a while longer. <laughs> They can't take it. They, they can't listen, dude. They can't. Everyone's like, are yeah. you, are you afraid oh, they can't? Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican Jews for Jesus. <laughs> Puerto Rican Jews for Jesus. Yo. <laughs> hey, I love this show. Wise word. Jesus is good. <laughs> I'm Jewish. <laughs> hey, you know. Yo. Hey, Stephen. Stephen, thanks, man. Yes, sir. Thank, shout you. Out thank, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you. Oh, Danny, always a pleasure. Thank always you. a pleasure. I'll talk to you later, Stephen. You guys. Thank you. Woo. Well, well I'm, I'm sorry. That was an outburst of energy. I don't know what happened. Listen, bro, I'm not mad at you. It was, it was, a, it, you know, I love when you come on the show because there's no stress. Like sometimes I have guests and like, it's a little stressful. Yeah, I got to yeah, do, yeah, no. do a lot of homework. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I may not know them. Like you're my boy. So it's like, you come on the show. It's like, you know, the, 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 the fucking, you know, the shit goes out the window, man. Like, fuck it. it, it, it you know? I know how it is. I, I, I know how it is. I do the, the Diablo's Den podcast. Yeah. And, we, and we've been doing it on Skype. And, and we've been killing it. Me and Jay has been killing it. And you guys, I, you guys do a good, it's good. You guys do good with it. And we do it differently. The thing is, with more, it's, it's a, I, I, I did this for a platform because I definitely, looking forward to my future, I definitely want to be a host to a show or fucking, you know, do something like that. I know, or, or serious XM radio or something. I know I can kill it wherever. I'm a personality. I'm an entertainer. You know what I mean? So it's like, I can't wait to, to do, I want to do stuff that I love. I want to do something that I love. I want to be hating life, you know, but work construction. I get up in the morning when I work construction. My, right now, my, 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 my knee hurts for no fucking reason. It's all because of everything I did in the past, you know what I mean? And we get older. I don't want to be old working construction, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm an artist. I'm an artist, you know, and and, and, and I'm doing the right thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing more of the movies. I'm doing more of the hard shit. I got Death Star Inferno. Shout out to Stepan. I'm doing the uh, new record at the end of the year. We're doing three new videos with Death Star Inferno. That's my metal band. Uh, uh, Scarhead's doing an EP. And, uh, Crown Thorns. Next year we were supposed to be touring. We're sick of it all. Yeah, and, right. That's, but that's gonna that's happen. Good. That's yeah. gonna happen. And I'll, I'll be touring next year. Will be Scarhead's gonna be touring hard. And Danny Diablo shit. I, I got the Danny Diablo Devils and Demons record out right now. Force Fire Records uh, with Mars. I got the Street CD Volume Number Three coming out. And Scarhead EP coming out. Generators of Violence on Force Fire Records. And the film Priceless. Price Priceless Tom Vujic uh, from 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 Canada. I love you, Tom. You know, Real World Productions. Fucking, it's on. Peter Green, yo, uh, I'm an award-winning actor. Me, me. Yeah, how many people can say I could be right now on all my little things, award-winning actor? But you know what I mean? How many people been in the industry for years, uh, acting and have got shit? You know what I mean? Listen, man, I'm, 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 I'm proud of you. I'm happy man, that. That means, I'm, that, 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 that means the world. I'm proud of you. When people say, "Yo, congratulations," I'm proud. It, it hurts my feelings that that. That uh, I'm in books, and graffiti, and all the stuff, and uh, my best friends, my producer, my best friends don't even say anything. I'm like, maybe they just see me as I'm like, motherfucker, you're in the book, huh? Uh, you can't even fucking tie your shoes and chew gum. You fucking reach on, say thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> listen. Uh, uh, we said it before. It's like perseverance pays off. Yeah. You're a great artist. You know, you have your hand in a lot of different things. I love you, bro. Thank you for you, coming. Bro. Thank you for coming on the show. We had a lot of laughs today. And listen, in the end, in the end, that's the currency, man. That's what we have. Yeah, yo, can I tell you something? One thing, my, like fi finding, like finding the niche in life and everything. I knew this was my hard New York hardcore scene was not something temporary. It's gonna be part of my whole life. Uh, right now, I, I shared my life with my my lady Alexandra. And, and, and we we go all over the world, bro. And we I would never done that being Queens working in the fucking in the liquor warehouse. You know what I mean like I, 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 it wasn't for the hardcore music? I would never ever been out of Queens. The only two places I've ever been out of out, out, of, out of Queens before I went on tour with Second Wall was Rhode Island, the first synagogue in in, in, in Rhode Island for a Portuguese synagogue in Rhode Island it was the first synagogue in the eighteen hundreds. My mother brought, made my father drive through cornfields to see this thing from Queens, and I went to Puerto Rico, and and it went, you know that was the only two places in 1987. That the only two places I've been there ever outside of Queens. They all of a sudden, boom! I'm all over the fucking world now due to New York hardcore. 
There you go. Any shout outs? Any shout outs as you head shout out? The shout out. Shout out to you, Drew. Shout out to Boya and the whole DMS squad. Uh, all my DMS Black Blue Nation. Shout out to Force Five Records. Shout out to my, my brother Ken357, who hooked me up. Like that. I got my dino back, a bike fixed up by him in Astoria. We're, we're riding graffiti again. Shout out to uh, Dress DMS. Shout out to Smurf. Uh, shout out to uh, my, 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 my girlfriend, Alexandra. Rose Storm, I love you, and I sh shout out to all my like shout out to, to to everyone. Big Left Records coming out, uh, Mad Ball, uh, DJ, DJ Cos, oh, DJ <laughs> Black <laughs> Anvil, uh, Steve, uh, Hector, uh, fucking uh, Cousin Joe, uh, Mikey Queens, and this, uh, oh, shout out to my brother Tavi, who's getting back into doing back and doing recording the videos and everything. So, Is that right? Yeah, so 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 I'll talk to my my partner Tavi, my video guy, and we'll talk to you. We'll see if we can work something out. All right? Listen, I'm I'm excited. Apparently, there's talk about me doing the new scar. Right, we're doing the new scar, sir. Don't no worry, I got you. Okay, hey man, I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Love you too, everyone. God bless. Uh, treat everyone how you want to be treated. Love you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Well, there you go. Wow. Wowie zowie. What a great show. Where did I see? Hold on. What did I just see? Michael Gibbons. That's right, Mike Gibbons. The only true currency you have in this bankrupt world is what you share with a friend when you're uncool. Anybody know what movie that's from? One of my all-time favorite films. Absolutely. Best episode ever. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for... Thank you, everybody, for, for checking in. Um, coming up, next show is, the, is the, uh, the People's Choice show on Sunday where you, you people, my patrons are coming on the show. We're going to have a lot of people coming through the show. It's going to be a lot of fun because, listen, in the end, it's our show. It's not my show or your show. It is really our show, and that's why this, that's why this has been somewhat successful It's because – it's not me or the pontificating, although I do that sometimes, but it's really our thing. So that said, we had a lot of, no, it's not Midnight Cowboy. Um, we had a lot of, we had a lot of laughs today. I, I laughed so much today, like put a big smile on my face and, and, uh, and I hope, I, I hope, I hope, and I, and I believe it did, uh, that it made you smile as well. So that that that's uh, that quote is from a film called Almost Famous, which is which is one of my which is really one of my all time favorite films. I, I I love that film. Yes, Almost Famous. Damn it, uh, scam. Good to hear from you, man. Get that music done and please come on my show. You know, uh, Vinnie Doak. We'll see you soon. Everybody else. Once again, uh, it, it 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 pains me to say goodbye. We had such a fun time today. I love you all. Do good things, and good things will come to you. I'll see you on Sunday.